All right, we're live. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Hey there, party people. What's up? Welcome to the show. We're the Fenders of Cobalt, and uh, we're here to play some Dungeon Sammy Crow is Classics waving high through the face of a demon. I don't... I kind of see her. Sort of. <laughs> anyway, we are here to play some Dungeon Crawl Classics. We're doing us a little sneak peek, world premiere, funky, cool stuff of... Um, a new adventure coming to you. This is, uh, oh, what is this? This is DCC 100. The sphere, or the music of the spheres is chaos. And it's due out in mid 2021, I believe, is the last I saw. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a fun little dungeon that I've been prepping. And, uh, if you like puzzles, you are going to be satisfied with tonight's dungeon because. Let me tell you, it's like camping. How intense it is. I like to smirk on oh, Jake. Oh. Mm. Can't say naughty words there, people. Mm. So, uh... Okay. Yeah, I'm Chuck. I guess, maybe, sure, we'll go with that. Uh, and let's do some introductions, I think, before we get into the dungeon. Um... Why don't all of you, we're going to go just in the order of the overlay, uh, starting with Tyler. Why don't you tell us who you are, tell us about your character, and plug any pluggables that you want to plug if you got plugs to plug. I'm Tyler. I am playing Father Leopold, the lawful cleric in service of, where is my deity? I have it down here somewhere. Gorhan, the Helmed Vengeance. Um, I don't have any pluggables because I am a defender of Cobalt, so you can catch me on anything that Chuck's in. There you go. Easy Mostly. enough. There. Jeremy. Hi, I'm Jeremy. Uh, I'm an adopted stepchild of the Defenders of Cobalt. Uh, I sometimes do a podcast called The Plewdcast, P-L-E-W-D, where we talk about comics. And uh, I'm going to be playing for Bounty. He's a mean old dwarven bastard. He's a mercenary. He's in it for the money. And this is going to be a good time. Mm-hmm. Okay. What do you want to plug? Oh, you already did the plug cast. I'm sorry. I did. I got distracted. I'm a bastard. I did that. I'm sorry. First. What was it called again? The 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 plug cast. Yeah. Send plugs. I, I hear it's really good. Mm. Well, I didn't well, know we were thanks. lying today. Oh. <laughs> oh, that oh the heat. Ooh. I feel burned right here. Oh my. Right here or here, but uh -huh. right in here. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right, Christopher. Uh, pluggables. I am Christopher from Two Old Guys Games. We write stuff at 2OGGames.com and the Goodman Games official store and, of course, Drive Through RPG. And I'm also uh, on Twitch on all the RPGs on Wednesdays. We either play Starcrawl or we play Mischief Golden Piracy, which is a nautical pirate campaign in DCC. Um, you sometimes find me here on this channel on Thursdays for Xcrawl. Or for the swashbucklers. Exciting. Yeah. All right. Uh, Bert. Hey, I'm Bert. I'm an honorary kobold, but I'm also the host and primary GM for Of Steam, Steel, and Murder, the podcast. Tonight, I'm playing Morneth Elrond, the elven. Well, he's an elf. <laughs> let's, let's just go with that. There you go. All right. Next down the list is Frendon. Hi, I'm Frendon. I'm also a member of the Defenders of Kobold, and I draw stuff for tabletop for a living, and you could catch my streams uh, doing that daily, pretty much. And uh, tonight I'm playing Rotgut Hauer, who's a self-hating elf, and uh, he's cut off his own ears, and he is uh, indebted himself to Babug Bazil, and he has a little familiar that's a tiny demon named Tadpole, because Babug Bazil is a frog deity. So tonight, expect him to bash and spell things yeah. as an elf is one to do. There you go. Did you plug your stuff to plug? I did. I okay, did. Good. <laughs> All right. Last but not least, Jake. I am Jake. I'm with the Defenders of Cobalt. And you can check out more of our stuff at twitch.tv slash Defenders of Cobalt. And I'll be playing a thuggish thief by the name of Waylon Bade. There you go. Okay. Tyler disappeared. Uh-oh. 
I'll be back. <clears throat> Gives me a chance to talk about my character, which I did not do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Also, we have bits. If you want to throw some bits at uh, Goodman Games, you're free to do so. 100 bits will get a point of fleeting luck for everyone in the party. Uh, 200 bits gets a free reroll, party's choice. And 500 bits, everyone gets healed one hit die. So, you know, throw some money. You can help these players out because I intend to kill all of their characters tonight. Maybe. I appreciate that, Chuck. Usually you attempt to call kill all of us players. Right. So well, this, this is, is a, PG, a refreshing difference. It's a PG-13 yeah. <laughs> stream, so I had to oh. I got to change my tactics. Well, yes. Okay. Okay. I thought this tea tasted funny. <clears throat> Thanks for sending it, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tastes like almonds. Mm. 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 Why is that? So, the Spheres of the Music is Chaos. You all are a band of adventurers looking for loot, adventure, glory. Through different points in your travels, you were all brought together. Um, on one of your last victories, you came across a mysterious letter or note uh, written in a code of sorts. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and show everyone. And that way the people on stream can see it as well. Uh, yeah, it's a complicated and wily thing. It took some while of thinking and sorting out, but eventually Oakenfin figured out how to yeah. translate it. Now, Oakenfin, would you be kind enough to uh, share with everyone what exactly it said? Yes, I will. It says, Sagar Matha, great treasure hold. I offer my soul to in soul chaos. Earth, fire, water, I bid thee bind the unbound and rule all. So, and there it is. So you would know that Sagar Matha is a mountain off in the north. Um, and, you know, a uh, mountain rumored to have a great treasure hold in it. Um, despite what might be, you know, eh, some other partially sketchy items listed in that letter, you all headed north. You find yourself in a tavern not too far off from the base of the mountain. You've gathered the provisions you need to set off in the morning and climb the mountain. Oh, hold on, Chuck. I call shenanigans from the start. Did they set up this tavern because of all the people that attempted to get the treasure and just died on the spot? And so, <laughs> so they just set up a tavern there? Is that what's going on? Maybe that's what it is. It's you know, <laughs> an adventurer tourist destination that's funded by corpses uh, in drop loot. <laughs> Very uh, entrepreneurial. It yeah. is, you know. I'm just more concerned about that uh pork stew they served us earlier yeah long pork Ooh, mm. Ooh. strange pork Ooh. long pork it's made for people so uh why don't uh one of you i'm gonna roll it die uh oh yeah the soil and green river beer was pretty good though uh going in the order of the overlay <laughs> starting one at tyler six at jake Two, that's going to be Jeremy. Jeremy, what is the name of this tavern that everyone finds themselves in this evening? Skankles. So you find yourself in a Skankles. It's a chain restaurant. They're they're all over. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um. Yeah, Jen. They franchise. It's absolutely fantastic. You find yourself sitting around discussing your plans for the morning. Um, but the, there's, as you're relaxing, a uh, strange violet light starts shining through all the windows and the cracks around the doors. Um, you're not sure what it is. It looks like there's almost a purple mist swirling around on the exterior of the window, uh, all the windows. The other patrons are looking a little concerned, um, but you, being the expertise adventuring party, uh, they kind of look for you uh, to guidance. Uh, what are you all going to do? 
guide. No. <laughs> Are we the only patrons in the tavern right now? No, there's probably like six or seven other people along with like a, a bartender and a couple servers in there. Uh, so <clears throat> Warneth will grab his tankard then and stand up and say, fear not. Purple is merely the color of death. Drink deeply for we'll all be dead by morning. Wow. Uh, you do not reassure anyone. Uh, a couple of the not people, even me. Yeah, a couple <laughs> of the people start to panic. Uh, like, oh my gosh, we're all going to die. And they just do that uh, that spiel from Aliens 2 uh, before one of them runs to the door to try and run out of the tavern. But when they grab a hold of the door, it doesn't open. Like, they're not able to force it open. Like, someone's locked us in here. All right, thugly thief, go kill them all. <laughs> Mm. You see, I feel to see how that's a problem. Because all the ale is in here, and it's not out there. uh... Um. Um. Can I cast Detect Magic? I mean, I can, but... Yeah, go. I would like to. Have fun. So I pull out a uh, mummified rat king corpse mm-hmm. <laughs> yes it's it's very it stinks a little bit some bits are broken off um, but this is my material and i bend it into a shape so that its appendages stick out kind of looks like a chaos star a little bit there and uh oh i have to have the window open so i can see the roll uh detect magic and I rolled a... 17? Yes, a 17. Excellent. Okay. Uh, which tells me, uh, I put certain amount in here, aware of magical enchantment on any object or creature within 30 feet, give or take. Um, can't distinguish which portion of the targets are magical, so things just light up if they are magical. Damn. Oh, weapons, weapons and stuff too, but... Uh, curious about the door okay yeah so yeah you you hold up your rat king and you peer through it you do see you know everyone you know yourself and all your fellow adventurers do have a magical <clears throat> item each to you uh and that's chuck telling all of you players if you haven't seen it yet all of you have a magical weapon um <laughs> you look around at the door and the windows and you can see there's this strange purple grow uh glowing from all of them it's definitely some kind of magical enchantment and as you're looking at it you can see from the windows and the doors invisible to the naked eye but you can see it looking through this purple tendrils of light are snaking out and darting towards all the other patrons in the bar but strangely that's none of it is heading in the direction of you or your fellow traveling companions I kind of like hold it up and I look over at Rotgut, whom I also yeah. know to be an elf. And I'm like, some strange magic is afoot from the as, windows and the doors. And it's about to attack those other patrons, but not us for some reason. As Bud Bazil wills, you know, like, I don't care about them patrons. Do you? Let's yeah. watch the show. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they have some useful things or tomes of knowledge that we can partis- partake. So, yeah, Later. <laughs> all of the other patrons in the tavern start passing out, dropping to the floor, slumping over their bowls on the table. Uh, smoke from the chimney in the uh, hearth in the corner starts backing up, and the room starts filling with the thick wood smoke. Um, now, see, that's a problem for us. Mm-hmm. I feel like that mm-hmm. is a problem. Mm. Um, hmm. See what can I do? I do not have like a. I mean, I can summon a demon. <laughs> I'm sure that that's, would help. That's the way to fix <laughs> this problem. It's like go from point A to nuclear option. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Bert? I mean, if you want me to, I can chop down a door if we don't want to suffocate. Ornith will soak uh, one of its cloths in his beard and just wrap it around his face. <laughs> that's oh, fair. There you go. <laughs> um. um yeah. I'm going to try to cast uh, force manipulation to make an invisible barrier uh, in the chimney 
uh, to block off the smoke that's coming in. Sure, like, go ahead and roll it out for me. Okay. That was a 35. Whoa. Whoa. Good. Got him. Whoa. What the hell? Whoa. Uh, that's a max roll on that die, right? Yeah. Yep. That means everyone gets a point of fleeting luck. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Got a place to put that? How did you manage to roll a d30 for that? That's awesome. So I, I have uh, my my mercurial effect was natural born talent. I rolled two d sizes higher. Oh, on that shit. Spell. Um, Naughty and so I'm, oh, poop. <laughs> <laughs> Better. <laughs> Here, this is this is the effect. That's pretty uh, awesome. The caster creates That's a wall wonderful. of force, twenty feet square per level in size. He can form this wall into any shape he can imagine, up to its maximum size in square feet. Uh, and I can move it if I concentrate ten feet per round. It lasts two d six plus caster level days. <laughs> Love it. Oh, I did uh, not mean to roll a check. Sorry. No, you're good. Caster level days plus five. 17 days. Wow, that's intense. Uh, this bar okay. is closed. <laughs> so yeah, you block off the chimney. The smoke stops pouring in. It doesn't get any thicker. But as you're all standing there watching this wall of force holding back the smoke, the smoke that is in the bar, you steep, uh, see starts kind of coalescing into humanoid shapes standing over each patron. And you see a blade of smoke and shadow in each of their hands as they start leaning Ooh. over each patron other than you, Ooh. each each you know person in this bar, and begins the work of dispatching them all. How long does this here wall last again? Uh, I'm going to be days. I'm going to be <laughs> chopping at a couple of smoke bastards and sure. Uh, yeah. I'm going to pick up my fingernails with my dagger. Did you say you're going to pick up your fingernails with your dagger? Pick at them. Oh, okay. I'm like, why aren't your fingernails attached? <laughs> yeah. <I'm gross. laughs> I dropped them earlier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stop leaving your fingernails around when we travel. That's gross. They, they fell out of my uh, stereotypical thief bag marked swag. Mm -hmm. That's where I keep um, my fingernails. Nice. For Bowdy, if you're going Dude. to attack one of these things with your axe, please roll me a check. Okay. I will. I'm not saying this is a smart thing to do. Yeah, the the drinking hall is sacred. It is. Oof. Nope. <laughs> Look at wow. me fumbling right off the bat. Wow, I guess we better roll. What's your fumble die? Oh, it's an eight. An eight on table what? Wait, does that mean we lose that fleeting luck we just gained? You do? I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know if there's different fumble tables. No, did. there is it one fumble on table, armor. but your armor is oh. determining what die you roll on it. So you, I oh, I'm sorry. A D12. Yeah, I, it's right there in front of me. I just wasn't thinking. An eight. Uh, you actually smash your weapon against something solid, an unyielding rock wall. Mm. Uh, it's luckily, it threw to the table. <laughs> yeah, luckily your uh, your axe is magical, so it's not shattered by the force of the blow. But you oh, cleave goodness. through the table and into the stone floor underneath, sending a small shower of sparks as the magical steel scrapes across the stone. The shadowy figures stop dispatching the bar patrons and turn towards all of you. Oh, man. So, uh... <clears throat> Let's uh, go ahead and do some initiative. So everyone give me an initiative roll. I don't have an initiative page set up, so I'm going to track it the old-fashioned way. It was this one. It was the one slumped up against the table. He tried, and I tried to stop him. Ooh, I, hey, I, I rolled a natural 20. We get a fleeting luck back? Yeah, you get a fle <laughs> we get a fleeting luck back, yeah. Wow. Oh my God. Uh, I rolled a nat 1. We lose it again. We lose it again. <laughs> uh -huh. I should have applied it to my... Nothing. I apply it to my initiative. No. <laughs> this game has been nothing but like everyone rolling super high yeah. and super low. All over the place. Crap. That's why it's fleeting. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we have three of you rolled twenties. That's yes. What the hell? We were ready. We were just sitting there watching them drinking. Like, yeah, look at these guys. Smoke guys. Oh, wait, we're going to attack now. <laughs> uh, 
don't have a spell on me that'll help with this. Well, I do. Mm. Let's see. Next up is going to be Demon Summoning. Man, Tyler, you Demon Summon always oh, helps. All right. I'm sucking it up big time, I know. Oh, what's going on here? Why don't you? I guess since Dan isn't in this game, somebody else has to. Roll yeah, down. you gotta you gotta take the low <laughs> low spot there. Yeah. All right. You see 13 of these shadowy shapes in the bar. Mm. Oaken, Rotgut, mm. or Forbaudi. The three of you all got 20, so I'll let you choose which one of you is going first. I have a zero agility bonus. Okay. So if anyone has one higher than that, they should go first. Um, I... Uh... I'm uh, actually quite nimble of foot, and I think that's kind of my role. I, I kind of yeah. feel like I might jump into danger. Okay. Go for it. So, well. What are you doing? Oh, well, when... So, I thought what we were doing was something that was... Some, there's a skill check. I was looking at chat. Oh, no. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, eat the children at the shame, smoke monster. Shame. Is that it? No. <laughs> yeah. um, yes. No, what are you doing on your turn there, friend? And we're in combat now. <laughs> so um, I think... Uh, the nearest child. And... <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so yes, I'd like to uh, use the force wall by concentrating to put it between uh, any myself and my fellow caster who's Oakenfen because we can actually cast spells through the wall without taking okay. damage. So you Ooh, nice. manipulate the force wall so that way you and Oakenfen mm. are yep. protected uh, behind mm -hmm. this barrier. And uh, then I'm going to uh, cast a magic shield on the dwarf who is about to get some uh, action going his way, it seems. Sure thing. Oh, yeah, I am. 21. Wow. Ooh. And let you me are see. hot tonight. Oh, you know what? That's the one spell I forgot to put a description in on my character sheet. I'll look it up real quick to okay. see what that result is. Uh, and actually, the um, the mercurial magic for that is mirror image, so there's now two of me in the bar, and that's the one they'll target in addition to the shield wall. 21 on magic shield? Yes. Plus plus four bonus for 1d3 turns. Okay. okay. So for bounty, you get uh, plus four to your AC for... I'm rolling it right now. Blocks magic missiles automatically. Let's test that. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, Jeremy, for one, one turn. Round. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or is it turn yeah, around? Take it. it says round. Turn around. Yeah. Okay. Okay, round. Okay. So it'll it'll end at the end of your next turn there. Uh, okay. uh, no, it says turns. Yeah, turns. One turn. One so turn. So that's, that's 1D3 like three turns. That's an hour in DCC, isn't it? Uh, 10 minutes, I think, isn't it? I think 10 minutes sounds okay. right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, for Still the next 10 minutes. Time. Yeah. All Ooh. right. So, Frendon, that's you. Um, Oakenfin or uh, for Bounty? Which one of you is going next? I'm glad to defer if you like there, Oakenfin. Uh, I am the um, cognitive sort of character so he's actually researching something at the moment just okay moment. so you, well, can, I'll you start. can leap up <laughs> all right then so the one that i just missed i'd look to him and i say that was a warning shot and then i go swinging as i want to do all right and I, I don't know if you can really you know this is a weird smoky dude but i'll try and lop at the part where the smoky knife is to see if I can disarm it. Sure. Because, I don't know. This is kind of just testing things out. So, deed it up. Nice. nice. I like that. Uh, so, 9 plus 6, 15. I don't know if a 15 will hit or not. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Yeah, 15 hits. Sweet. So, that's 8 plus six so 14 points of damage if it takes damage it does take damage and so you were trying to disarm this thing 
Mm -hmm. So you swing hard at this thing's hand holding this dagger. Mm -hmm. And the your axe bites through the smoky appendage, severing it from the body. And what drops to the ground is not, you know, a wisp of smoke, but an actual hand mm. holding a dagger garbed in a strange uh, gray silk covering, like a jumpsuit of some <laughs> kind. <laughs> oh, that makes me happy. That is what I was waiting for. I've got a second <clears throat> action die that I'll try out. So that would be a 16 That's after the D die. So that one will be, I'll just do another D8. Yeah, D8 plus three. Oh, plus six or plus nine. Yeah, because of the D die. Sorry, they don't. So another 11. Another 11 damage. You yep. behead the shadowy figure in front of you, and their head goes flying across the room and bashes into a table and knocks a bowl over. And as the body drops to the floor, the smoky, you know, uh, glamour dissipates, and you see it's, you know, it looks like a dark assassin's outfit uh, as the body drops hmm. to the ground. I assume that's the only one that was close to me at the moment, right? Um, there's 13 of the, well, now 12 of them in this bar. So I'll say you'll be within arm's reach of another one or two. Because I would love to shield bash another one. So basically just chop off the dude's hand, back swipe, chop off his head, look at the one to the left of me, and then just give a big old grin and just bash a spiky shield Absolutely. into his face. So I'm a good person. There you go. Yes, you are. All right. Nah. So your well, your shield bash it goes off on a three. Or the the uh, mighty deed. Or wait, what was oh, that? That I'm was confused. the attack roll. Oh, so yeah. even with a plus six on that, it's still a nine. Okay, so you you rolled a natural one. Oh, that is yeah. You're right. So if there were fleeting points of luck, they're gone. Mm. Go ahead and roll your called, fumble die. They're not called oh, permanent man. luck for a reason. Yeah. Okay, man. Right. Highs and lows. Highs yeah. and lows. So three's not bad. Uh, I should have done a minus one, but whatever. Okay. Uh, so was that supposed to be a three or a two? Uh, it should have been, I think, actually a one because I rolled a oh, two. Okay. I meant to do minus one instead of plus one. Okay. So that's a one. Um. This will be fun. Uh, your incompetent blow makes you the laughing stock of the party. In other words, causes no damage. Yes. But, but I just did the, the hand chop and the decapitation. And... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Shield bash, more like shield rash. <laughs> Oak and Finn, it is now your turn. <clears throat> Now that I've seen that they have physical form, <clears throat> I want to uh, stride forth uh, to be within 15 feet of as many of them as possible. Sure. I'll say you can get uh, within 15 feet. You can get so you're within uh, six. Within, All right. There's six of them within your 15 feet. And I'm going to choose one or more depending on the spell i'm gonna cast color spray oh wow yeah oh my lord wow uh which also has the 1d6 uh energy burst and the energy burst is a three so within 15 feet of me an aura of frost which does 1d4 cold damage to every oh everything within 10 feet and snuffs torches and lanterns in range <laughs> I just eat the warmth from the room. So yeah, the the tavern goes dark. Just so, within that's ten feet within ten feet of me. Okay, so and the twenty two, I get to pick three targets. Okay, uh, each target of two or less HD is automatically affected. Okay, let me take a look. We'll see what their HD value is. They are above that. They are okay. At then. Four. Will save versus my spell check of 22. Okay. I'm just going to roll uh, the targeting three. I'll roll three of them. 
Yeah, not one of them pass. All right, then they are blind. Uh, wait a minute. Targets that fail one save are blinded. Targets that fail both saves. What? Both saves. Oh, the that's if they're under 2 HD. Okay, so they're they're just blinded, but they're blinded for 2D4 plus 1. That's an S. For four rounds. Okay, so yeah, three of these smoky assassins are blind. And then all of rounds. them within 10 feet of me yeah. uh, took two points of cold damage. Oh, wow, okay. And uh, Jeremy killed the one, and there's what two left? Is it? Well, uh, and and oh. I have a, a second action die. <laughs> Let's see. Which now that they are blind, I think I will swipe at the another one with my sword. Ooh, there are days. there's still twelve of them in here. So you swipe <clears throat> out it one of the three that are blind. Yeah, I forgot they had the blindness bonus, which I think was plus two, so it would have been nineteen to hit. Nineteen's a hit, yeah. Or th oh my god, maximum damage. Thirteen points of damage from my my dancing sword. Nice. So the one that you hit does not go down. But it's they are in very rough shape, and they're you know, you see blood spurting out of the misty form. Okay, now I'm done. <laughs> All right, so now the 12 assassins are going to attack. Let me find the thing I need to see. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, the. Yeah, you know what? There's 12 of them. There's six of you. Each of you, well, except for Rotgut, who's protected behind a wall of force. Mm hmm. So each of you is going to get attacked by two of these, except for Rotgut, and then Oak and Finn and Forbaudi, you get attacked by three. You still have the plus four uh, for Bowdy to your AC. All right, so starting with Oak and Finn, these all, let me double check my numbers. I have a 13 AC. Okay. They attack with their daggers. And each one of them hits. Mm. And these are all blinded, so they took a penalty for being blinded and attacking you. Mm -hmm. Oof. Dealing you 17 points of damage. All right. For about Ouch. each. Three of them roll up on you. These okay. are also blinded. Um, your AC is what? It's at 21 right now. Yep. They all miss. None of them clear your AC. Yay. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Rockut. Morning. I've always had a special love for Rotgut. Ooh, one of them gets a 23. The other one crits. Mm. So, Mornath, I need to roll a... Oh, my gosh. Where is it at? There it is. Oh, no. Okay. 
So the first one, Mornath, you're going to take six points of damage. The one with the critical hit uh, gives you 11 points of damage. Okay. That hurt. Too many jeepers. I think this was a bad idea. You know, I'm great with this. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Waylon, two of these assassins roll up on you. What's your AC? 14. They both clear it. Curses. Uh, and dealing you 13 points of damage as the two assassins sink their blades into you. That's all together? All together. Okay. Ow. All right. Let's see. I got you, you, you. Friend in your safe. So, mm -hmm. last but not least is Father Leopold. What's your AC? Uh, 17. They both clear it. Ken. Mm. Dealing you 13 points of damage as these blades strike flesh. Ouch. Mornath, you are up. I'm up, huh? All right, so my first action is to cast Scorching Ray at the bastard that critted me. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Seems reasonable, yeah. yeah. All right, so this is uh, my mercurial thing here, and that's a crap roll. Uh, 14. I don't, I don't think that does anything. Uh, it's the Joe average here. mercurial roll, so it um, I rolled two d10s instead of a uh, d20. Okay, and let's see, scorching gray. Sorry, fourteen is one target takes one d6 plus caster level damage. Additionally, you must make a reflex save versus spell check or catch fire. If you want to do that part yep. of it. Uh, I got a 12 on that. So it does. they do catch fire. And they take 10 points of damage. Yeah. All right. And they will continue to burn uh, an additional D6 points of damage and just, until it succeeds a DC 15 reflex save to extinguish the fire. Um, anything that is carrying that's possible to catch on fire has a 75% chance of catching on fire as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, as your scorching ray burns this assassin, their uh, magical glamour with the smoke starts to break, and you can see, you know, it's just a dude in a fancy jumper burning to death uh, slowly. Uh, but they're still up. All right, and the other one that hit me, I'm just going to lash out with my longsword. Sure thing. D sixteen. Thirteen. Thirteen is a hit. All right. Six points of damage. Okay. So, Mornath, as you slash out at your two attackers, in the center, it's not necessarily the center, but towards the the center of the far wall. So if you're all fighting kind of up here in the center area of the scene, mm -hmm. down here, what is very obviously a caster of some form appears. Uh, he's dressed in, let's see, let me make sure I get you the right description. Uh, he's got this strange wizardly looking robe big old pot belly long spindly arms like spiders long spindly legs and he he cackles out retrieve the sheave of chaos my assassins do not spare them until you have it and give it to me uh, and with that they are going to cast a spell at you. Uh, 
let's roll that out. Meanwhile, Forbario just kind of shyly so any of you know what the hell a sheave is? Paper? Sure. I think so. I don't have any paper on me. Do you? The I always have some papers on me. I. The cigar matha. Rolling papers, sheet. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and at the most, rolling papers, sure. I always have parchment and an ink pot. But. I think he means that sheet that led us to the mountain. Yeah. Darn. All right. Oh, oh yeah. I'm going to roll a d6. I'll do this publicly. Because I did not do great on that spell check. Okay. Oops. I'm going to roll a d6. Uh, this is going to go to... Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Ooh. Ooh. Rot gut, a single dart of magical energy lances out okay. from this wizard. Does your wall of force block? It blocks magic missiles automatically. Let me check. It blocks this bolt of energy automatically. Okay. Nice. Waylon. Well, now that uh, that angry looking fellow, where is he standing at again? Down at the far end of this bar, against the wall, uh, all oh. on their own. Okay, I'd like to um, move up against the the eastern wall and try to sneak silently down along that uh, that wall that's blocking sure. off the front There's door. Still there's still smoke in the air. There's chaos going on. Uh, please do so. All righty. Bing, bang, boom. Eighteen. Yeah, you disappear into the shadows, you move without a bit of noise, and you're able to move clear up around the corner where they're at uh, without alerting them to your your presence. Oh, beautiful. I'll stick right there until it's time to stick right in his ribs. There you go. Okay. So next up is Leopold. Oh, I finally get to go. You do. Wow. Um I think there are two guys on me, right? Mhm. Mm I think I am going to pick one of them and smash them with my magical warhammer. Sure thing, yeah. Um, 22 hits. 22 definitely hits. 12 damage. Ooh. Nice. Dang. Almost maxed. It's impressive. You put a uh, lot of damage on this yeah. assassin, but it's not enough to drop him. That's okay. And that's all I get to do. Okay. So you move up. You smash. And then the initiative order starts back over. Um, Rot, you are up first. I don't like the looks of that magic missile. So I'm going to call upon b bug b bills And I'm going to uh, try invoking my patron. <laughs> yeah. b bug b bills bug b bills Now, invoking your patron, you do have to, you know. The spell burn. I, I, uh -huh. I got rid of a point of agility. I'm, I'm saying what he did is he stabbed himself in the leg to get psyched up. Uh, and let's see. Invoke patron. 17. 17. Let me see what that gets me. I've got it here. But Bugbabill sends a plague of toads. The squishy horde hops onto the scene in 1d4 rounds. The thousands of toads collectively occupy approximately a space of 20 feet by 20 feet, which can overlap with other creatures. The toads attack all enemies of the caster and Bugbabills within their space. The swarm disperses in 1d6 rounds, and the toad horde has a stat block. Okay. There are a thousand of them. Roll me a d4. <laughs> what? Oh, no. <laughs> so it's going to show up in four rounds. Four rounds. Okay. Um, and so that was my d20 action dice. Yeah. For my d14, um, I am... Uh... Oh, this is a bad idea. I love it. I'm going to uh, try Magic Shield again. All right. Mm. And so uh, let me just manually roll the 
the uh, the magic shield. All right. All right you can 14. do it. Fourteen mm -hmm. should be a success. Mm -hmm. Um, and th oh, that is the one spell I don't have written down. So let me look it up again. Sorry, chat. Finding it. Spells. Oh, come on. Magic shield. Okay. So I uh, I provide a, a shield that provides a plus four bonus to AC for two D6 rounds. So okay. that's a, again to our brawly boy uh, for Bowdy. Now, yeah. I have mine for like 10 minutes or so. Oh, then why don't I give it to uh, Waylon? I'm going to give it to Waylon. Okay. If you've still got yours. Seven. Seven rounds? Yep. Seven turns. So, uh, I believe 14 is just rounds. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so yeah. This, yeah. this one's just rounds. So, Waylon, you get a plus four to your AC for seven rounds. I oh, love pretty it. Pretty amazing. And my familiar now is going to run up and attack one of the shadow people with its d20. Okay. What type of familiar do you have? It is a tiny demon, which I am saying is a tiny demon frog named Tadpole. Oh, my gosh. Wonderful. It's 13 for one point of damage. Okay, one point of damage is noted. All right. Sweet. Hop to it, Tadpole. <clears throat> Good one. Wait, don't oh. Tadpoles have tails? <laughs> for Bowdy. Well, I'm going to take note of that robed son of a gun who's laughing at me for my previous uh, little mishap. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to put my axe right in his kneecap, trying to make him drop to the ground. Sure. So try my deed die out. I don't like being laughed at. Very bashful dwarf. <laughs> no. Okay. Deed doesn't pop off. <sighs> I hate you guys so much. <laughs> All right, so 15 that to hit, hit and yeah. 13 damage. Okay, they're still up. They're okay. in real rough shape. All right, so I'll do D14. Sorry, so we are, I'm trying to do my second attack action. So I've got two and then two more from that. Okay. So I'll do another slash at him. That's a hit, yeah. 18, and then that'll be... T eight plus five. Come on now. Oh, it didn't roll. God, that should work this time. There we go. You slay that shadow assassin. You okay? Swipe at their thigh. It bites deep. And then you bring on the backswing down, like right across their chest, and it just spills out their internal bits on the ground as they collapse to the floor dead. Oh, who's laughing now, you little rhinestone jerk? <laughs> um, now you still have two more of these assassins on you. I so am I supposed to do a different deed die for the shield bash, or just use one? I think it's the first deed die for that round. Okay, done and done. I'll do my shield bash real quick then. So, all right, so that'll be a D14 plus four. Nope. Okay. So that this is. It's not a fumble. It's not a fumble. That is it's good. Darn news. close. Yeah. Oaken. Uh, Oaken Fen, seeing the caster, um, <clears throat> doesn't like enemy casters. So I'm going to uh, reach forth into the magical energies and pull forth. Uh, Sleep. One hopes. I love sleep. It's a great spell. Oh, 13. Not a very powerful result. Um, one target has to make uh, a save or fall asleep for 1d6 turns. Okay, so they got to beat a 13 there? Yeah, and I have to specify the condition, which is uh, slapped hard in the face by Tadpole. <laughs> <laughs> So, I want to roll. I'll go ahead and make this. Yep. And it's the caster I'm targeting. So, right. it's a tie. 
Hmm. I'm going to say, I always like to say that the person who initiated the action wins on ties. Right. So, they fall asleep. For 30 minutes. Wow, they are <laughs> Until out. he gets slapped by uh, Tadpole, slapped hard by Tadpole. Um, and then I'm in some danger because I don't have very many hit points left, so I have to kind of try to retreat. Okay. There's that wall behind you, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's like just kind of <laughs> behind the force, <laughs> behind the there force wall. There mm -hmm. you go. Oh, wait, I've got a thing for this. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> just gonna step behind the force wall here and <laughs> nice. That joke is unenforceable. <laughs> mm -mm. Like they can see me, but they can't hit me. <laughs> I can't tell if Irene is offended by that pun or uh, is amazed by by the snap filter. Why can't we both? Why can't we both have a victory there? Yeah. Yeah. I think we both yeah. get that victory. So for Bounty, let's be kind to ourselves mm. today. Yeah, three of these assassins attack you. Yay! Oh, good. What's that your means AC I'm again? Somebody else. Somebody else. Twenty-one. None of them clear your AC. Excellent. So hopefully somebody is getting fewer attacks then. Uh, well, three of them tried to attack you. I they killed missed. one. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm all for if I attracted another one away from another player. <laughs> you did. It was one of the three that was trying to take out uh, Oak and Finn. Yes. Thank you. And you know what? The other two for Oak and Finn are just going to attack you as well. Why not? Yes. They're close. That's what I'm here for. Ooh, they do a bad job. A real bad job. I may be an embarrassment when it comes to the shield bashing, but I'm pretty good at just tanking. Yeah. So, Waylon, the two that were attacking you have lost sight of you. So, one of them is going to move over to Mornath, and the other one is going to move over to <laughs> Leopold. So, oh, Mornath, no. three of these attack you. All right. If the one wants to not be on fire, he has to take his actions oh to gosh. make that save. Yeah, let me do that. They're going to take their action to make that save. And they got to beat a 15. They clear it. Uh, or Yeah, well, they, they hit 15 exactly. Actually, that's just the die roll. And it's a will save or reflex mm -hmm. save. Will? Oh, okay. Uh, reflex. Okay, they do clear the 15, so they spend their turn putting the fire out. Okay, so two of them are attacking you, Mornath. And your AC is... Ooh, one of them fumbles. 16. One hits and one fumbles. So the one that hits is going to deal you... Uh, that is going to be... Let me double check. Five points of damage. And the one that fumbles. Oh, just a two. They're just a laughing stock to the other assassins. All right. I like that. Oh, no, did you see is... that guy? Yeah, like, yeah. Let's just laugh at that guy. Not not me. That guy now. He's he's the silly one. Leopold. Ooh, what's mm. your AC? Uh hold on. Let me get back to that page. 17. Okay. One of them does hit. Okay. Dealing you seven points of damage. That's quite a bit. The other two miss. Okay. Mornath, you are up. Right. The wizard's still here, right? Here, but asleep on the ground. He's asleep on the ground. Okay. Will not well, be awoken until slapped in the face with Tadpole. I am going to cast Charm on uh, one of the guys. Well, the guy that just hit me. Sure. <laughs> That's a love tap. I'm sweet on you now. Oh, wow. 25. 20. That's oh. good. Mm. Um, actually, I can target a number equal to 1d6 plus caster level. Ooh, oh, so 1d6 my. plus 5. Oh, my. Stab yourselves. Uh, I can't order them to do anything detrimental. So, six. Okay. six How many seven. standing targets are there? There's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
8, 9, 10, 11. There's 11 standing right now. So you can all right, target well, six all Six of them. Yeah, all but five. Yep. So yeah. All right. So the five furthest from me, we'll just call it that way. It's like a wave. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Each of them must make a will save or fall under the caster's complete control as if it uh, were his friend. Uh, cannot perform actions that are suicidal or which a devoted friend would not otherwise perform. Okay. All right, so they need to make will saves. Sure. So I need to make six will saves. Uh, they all get a... I'm going to do it public so everyone can see. Uh, they all get a plus four to this. I'm going to roll 6d20. Um, the highest I got was a 14. Your score was a 25. They all fail. All right. Uh, at minimum, they can't make another save for a month. Actually, next day if they're really smart. <laughs> but I, yeah, yeah. All right. So what's uh, your so command? They, okay. Well, my command is to uh, stand down. Yeah, they, yeah. they on their next turn, they will all comply with your order. Uh, you can see the ones that have been affected by this because their bodies kind of go slack a little bit. They kind of drop out of their fighting style. Uh, but yeah, on their next turn, they'll fully stand down. Okay. Uh, Very cool. What so else? If, they, the, if they're really, really smart, they can save again the next day. Like okay. That's, it's going to be at least a day. Uh, well, my second action, since all of my foes, uh, is there another one near me that wasn't enchanted that I can uh, reach out and stab? <laughs> yeah. Well, you went for the ones that were far away from me, right? Well, starting at me, so the ones that are furthest from me are the ones unaffected. Okay, okay. But I haven't taken a move, so if I can move over to one of them and stab, I will. Otherwise, sure. no. Yeah, so the ones closest to you are all affected. The, what is that, one, two, uh, three, four. The four that were over by for Bounty. Uh, I'm sorry, the five over by for Bounty are the ones that are unaffected. Um, I will take the one that's closest to me and slash at that person. Absolutely. Uh, only a 10. Uh, 10 does not clear. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, next up, it is the sleeping wizard who continues to sleep. Uh, Waylon. It's okay. He needs a nap. I'll come around the corner to stab the wizard and see that he's, you know, got his jimmy jams on and he's gone night-night. <laughs> Wait! So, oh. <laughs> uh. I'll, uh, then... Uh, let's see. Among those who have been charmed, yep. uh, is the one who just put himself out of fire, is, is he... Yep, he's one of them. Okay, he's one of the ones charmed. Yeah. Um, I'll approach the most damaged one who is not charmed. Sure, absolutely. Okay, and then try to stab him in the ribs. Absolutely, go ahead. Uh, should have my equipment. Here we go. So you yeah, backstab with your dagger? Yeah, that's... I can tell you with that damage, you slay them outright. Excellent. Ooh. Well, yeah, that was a crit. That was. Well, all backstabs well, no. are crits. Yeah. Oh, all of them are... Okay, cool. Uh, mm. I can look at the table to see... What that yeah, let's just does. get some flavor of how exactly I kill this guy. Yeah. You strike them in the head. They must make a fortitude save or fall unconscious. Well, they just fall dead. Mm. So you, like, walking dead, you just sneak up and just plant the dagger deep into their ear, pull the blade out, and they drop to the ground, slain. Uh, anything else, Wayland? Nah. Feeling All pretty right. good about that. Father mm -hmm. Leopold. I'm learning that clerics suck because they don't get their second attack until level six. There you go. Uh, but I'm going to attempt to cast Holy Sanctuary to guard myself from these monsters. Where did sure. my character sheet go? I don't know. I closed it, but not the spell sheet for some reason. Let's go Holy Sanctuary. I think that's just a failure. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You cast doesn't kick off. Anything else you're doing? 
Um. I don't think so. Okay. No. Turn passes to Rot. Rot, you see that six of these assassins have gone slack uh, with one of Mornath's right. spells, leaving four of them surrounding for Bowdy. Uh, four around for Bowdy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, for my D20, attempt to cast Magic Shield again. All right. Um, four for Bowdy, though. Um, and with this, that will make a third mirror image of me appear oh, as wow. well, because that's the... So Wait, what anything spell that are you casting? Me, Did you say uh, Magic Shield? Magic Shield. It's but still my... on them. Yeah, it's on me for like 10 minutes or so. Okay. Uh, um, Wayland and for Bowdy have it then, then mm -hmm. I'll cast it on Tyler, because he doesn't get a second attack and already took seven points of damage, if I remember okay. right. So you cast it on Father Leopold. Yes. 15, which uh, I've got that in here now. Um, he gets a plus four AC for 2d6. It's that same range as last time. Okay. okay. I will take every bit of AC I can get. Mm -hmm. So for next 10 rounds, you get plus four to your AC, uh, Father Leopold. Awesome. There are, now, um, there are now three of me walking around that would take a hit before I do. Which is why, uh, for my D14 action die, I'm going to step out from behind the force field wow. and stab uh, one of these dudes. Um, Around for bounty? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so equipment. Try this, D14. Bust out that magic sword of yours. That's what I'm doing, yeah. I think uh, everyone's got a magical melee weapon except for Mornath, and Mornath has a magical bow. All right, so let me uh, let me edit it real Let's quick see. to make the D die a uh, a fourteen for this attack. All right, done. Eighteen with six points of damage. Eighteen with six points of damage. You put some hurts on one of them. They're still up. So you run up, you attack with your demon's bane sword, and it slices deep. But they're still up and moving. I'm going to spend two uh, luck to add two to that damage. Two to that damage? Okay. They're still up. It's not enough. Then to I'm going to send Tadpole after him then. Oh, send Tadpole after him, yeah. Get in there, Tadpole. Oh, Tadpole fumbles. Any fleeting oh, luck tadpole, is now no. gone. Oh. Uh, fumble 12. My goodness. You accidentally swing at one randomly determined ally within range. That's probably me, Tadpole. Well, it's randomly determined, so it's yeah. you or it's for Bounty. <laughs> oh, oh no, Mornath is up there too. What about uh, all the what about all the charmed people? Would they now count as allies? Yeah, but they're on the other side of the bar. Mm. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna roll a D six. <laughs> Just don't hit the sleeping mage. <laughs> yeah, luckily the sleeping mage is on the other side of the bar as well. I'm gonna roll a D six. One and two is for Bounty. Three and four is Mornath. Five and six is Rotgut. For Bowdy, Tadpole gets confused and accidentally attacks at you. Tadpole, if you could please give me that roll again. <laughs> 23 to hit. That clears for Bounty's AC. What the hell? For oh, Bounty, no. you take one point of damage from Tadpole. So Tadpole was... Um... You know, just so embarrassed by missing that first swing uh, that they really put their back into the second one. <sighs> That's fantastic. I just, I don't even know what to tell you, Tad. You, we're gonna have a talking about this. You I don't know, know what you're did. talking about. I think this is riveting. Oh, I'm uh, not drunk enough to deal with this. Uh, so, oh, Sammy in bad. chat is asking what everyone's hit die are. Just what your hit die size is. Six? Elves, I might be six. It's six for elves. I'm a D8. Ten. And Jake, what's a thief? Is that a six as well, or is that an eight? Yeah, I can't find where... Huh, I didn't write it down. That's I'm at a dangerously low 49 hit points right now. That oh, is no. wildly low. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have six. Six, six hit points. <laughs> I have 33 yeah, hit so points. Yeah, so a bunch of D6s. 
and then you know d whatever for bounties is 10 and then whatever d8 for father leopold Familiar is adding their, e their HP to the wizard is nice. Or yeah, Sammy, is. thanks for those bits. Everyone, go Ooh. ahead and heal yourself. One hit die oh. worth of HP. All right. Thank you, Sammy. That's... All right, then. I, I, give, I give a little tadpole a little tap on his head and say, you're all right, then. It is your turn for bounty. All right. Well, what I'd like to do is turn to the one who's already nice and injured. And I'd like to get a good scooping upward action with my axe because I'd like to slice him in such a way that his blood sprays into the eyes of the next man. I love it. Because I'm a, I'm a real bastard. I want to blind a man with his own friend's blood. I love it. Go ahead and make your attack against the first one. Okay. Oh, oh I got a seven on that D die. Awesome. Ooh, that's great. And then, mmm, mmm, that feels good. Give me a D... Four roll, please. Okay, I will. You slay the one that uh, Rotgut just stabbed. Wonderful. Spraying this one's blood all over the next one. <laughs> uh, you got your friend on you. That's fantastic. So yeah, that one is now blinded. So any attacks you do against that one get a plus two. Okay, wonderful. I'll just take that in because I've got to do the next one as a D14. Yeah. I'll just factor that in. It's a D14. It's a plus two, you said? Yeah, plus two for them being blind. Okay, so four, six, and then 13. Oh, good lord. That's a big old bonus on that attack. Nice. And then I, I'm assuming that'll hit. Yeah, 18 hits, yeah. D8 plus 7, 3, 10. All right. And I'll just, uh, oh my lord. You slay that one. <laughs> and then I'll turn to the next one and I'll bash them in the face too. All right. Jeez. For Bowdy, for Bowdy, for, for, for Man, Bowdy. This is <laughs> so great. <laughs> There's two of them left that aren't charmed. All right. Make those four body drop. That ten's eh, not a hit. Ten's not a the shield bash has not been my friend, but that axe is doing work. That axe is doing work. All right. So after for bounty, it turns back to Oakenfen. <laughs> uh man, I just kind of want to watch the clinic that for bounty's putting on. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> just I, I like I lean over to him and I'm like spraying one person with another person's blood is how I start a lot of my magical rituals. I'm going to keep you around. <laughs> I'd love to learn more about that because I feel like I've got a real talent for that sort of thing. <laughs> um, I want to go truss up that mage and make sure he... Uh, Tyler didn't kill him, did he? Tyler, did you kill him? Oh, no, no the I mage is still mage, unconscious, yeah. untouched since they fell asleep. I want to yeah. go, go tie him up. Sure. Because I have questions. Plus, maybe we can twerk some magic out of them, rot gut. <laughs> so, yeah. You torture, move up, torture some magic out of them. I'll say so, you use uh, uh, one of your action die to, to bind him up. Yeah, he's so he's behind the bar, you said. Right? Uh, he's down at the, the bottom of the map. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so your combat's like up in the center. So, yeah, you can just use your map movement to get down there. Sure. I'll that's what I'll do this round is I'll just I'll just move down there and I will truss him up like a pig, maybe break a finger just, just accidentally. For fun. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which one did he waggle for that magic? Accidentally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Step on it. All right. You do anything else? No, that's I, I want to make sure he's trussed up and can't cast. So taking special care stuff a candle in his mouth uh -huh. so for bounty and a lit one there you go for bounty the two remaining assassins attack you uh one of them fumbles and the other one gets a 22 all right all right so the fumble oh uh just a miss oh no it's uh yeah just a miss nothing crazy 
And then the one that got a 22 is going to slip a blade in between the rings of your armor, dealing you five points of damage. Oof. The hell are you doing? Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Yeah. Except for me, when I fall on my face. Uh, in a stupor. The other assassins dispel their smoky disguise. They sheath their daggers. Um, and they, uh, you know, they surrender. They're like, all right. I'm sorry we did that, man. We're all good now. Like, I don't know what came over me. Oh, shit. Tyler. Oh, crap. <laughs> Mornak, <Sorry>. you're up. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. All right. Um, hey, buddies. Um, hey, why don't you go and um, stop your your friends from hurting my friends over there? Just just detain them. Just disarm them. Sure. I mean, we can have a little chat. And you can sure. tell us. You know why? Why? Why you? Why are you trying to stab me in the back, buddy? So three of them run to one of the two remaining. Uh, they're just going for disarming. Uh, so I'm going to do opposing strength rolls. Ooh. Yeah, one of them is they wrestle the weapon out and kind of like force them to sit down in a chair. They managed, both of them, get wrestled down and sat down in a chair, their daggers. And so the two remaining assassins are being held down, each of them by three of their friends. <laughs> um, do we want to keep an initiative or do we want to break initiative at this point? Are all the uh, bar patrons dead? Um, not all of them. You managed to spring into action before they were all slain, but is the bartender dead? That's the important part. <laughs> uh, give me a luck check. <laughs> Let's see. Is that under? Yeah, bartender's alive back behind the bar. Oh, no, I want him dead. Oh, <laughs> he's dead then. Yeah, he was one of the first to go. Right, so uh, with my second action, I'll go behind the bar and start pouring drink drinks for all my buddies. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's great. You How know, you might be hurt? enough, but you're one of the good ones. You just uh, inherit a bar? <laughs> I think we did. So it's at about this time that all of a sudden frogs... Start oh, spewing out of every crevice. Thousands. Thousands and thousands of frogs. Um, so, Frendon, the frogs swarm over the two assassins that are being held down. Mm -hmm. Do the frogs... Would they Automatically be, attack. Would they... Automatically well, I'm, I'm not getting... That's yeah, yeah. fine. Yeah. Would you be considering the six mind-washed assassins is friend or foe right now they're my buddies <laughs> so i think i think i would at this point like just realize that that was a whiff like like swing and a miss there but bug bazil you could have gotten here quicker and uh i, I don't think i'm considering them foe right now because okay. we might need them okay so the six are on your side they're watching as horror is all these toads and frogs just devour their two friends what about the bar patrons? You've all been pretty neutral at mm. best. Would you consider them friend or foe? And what about the wizard hogtied on the ground? So unfortunately, like, the wizard hogtied on the ground shot a bolt at me. I don't think that I have much of a choice to, but to consider him a foe and potentially dangerous. Maybe he could make all these bar patrons uh, come alive uh, or be under his guise like the the ones that woke up and were like, okay, ah, Finn, I'm, I'm good. Uh, go ahead and give me a uh, an agility test. All right. Uh, actually, why don't you make it a reflex save for me? Sure. Uh, reflex. The reflex 13. I'll give it to you. I was going for 12. You mm. see these frogs start swarming out and just biting little bloody chunks out of the wizard. So really quickly, you pick the wizard up and you toss him onto a nearby table out of the reach of the frogs. Um, I mean, he deserved to be bit anyway. 
Yeah. He just spells at us. If the bar That's patrons rude. are alive or not, you don't know because they're buried under thousands of frogs. I kind of so. I I don't think I'd consider them faux, but yeah, this is a twenty foot space with thousands of frogs in it, right? Yeah. Like, so they, you, you're not sure. You just can't see them anymore. If only I had a fireball, man. We could eat for weeks. You could. <laughs> hey, Sammy just dropped two hundred bits. Um, that is pocketing a free reroll. You all can use it for whatever you want. Ooh, wonderful. That's fantastic, Sammy. Thank you. Despite your choice in men, you're pretty all right. <laughs> oh. Ooh. It's I, true. Her choice in men is pretty terrible. <laughs> I say this from experience. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you have the wizard on the table. Frogs are leaping around you. All of the hostile assassins are dead. Corpses consumed by frogs, just bloody skeletons lying there on the ground. What happens next? I'm pouring beers for everybody, having my new friends belly up to the bar and say, uh, hey, so uh, what's with the wizard? <laughs> I'm with the guy pouring the booze. I'm uh, taking everything off of the wizard except for his robes. You. Okay. Um, take those two. Yeah. Take those two. <laughs> but like literally just like laying it all out in a nice orderly fashion like i'm bagging and tagging a crime scene over here because <laughs> i want to see what kind of cool stuff he's got that might be useful um i'm also, these guys for information basically i'm gonna heal anybody who needs it oh, right here the one thing i'm good at <laughs> over here bert and then chris okay. so let's do bert First, lay on hands. A thirteen. Uh, I am chaotic, so that's going to change your. Uh, you get one hit die with healing out of. Uh, so yeah. Now, and the. Chris, oh, neutral. Sorry. Neutral. neutral. Uh, with a roll of nineteen, you get two hit die of healing. Nice. Oh, excellent. I mean, if you got any extra laying out there. Uh, oh, I mean, I might as well. Oh no. That was brutal. Ooh. As long as I don't roll a D1, I want... Oh, I crit that. That is a point of fleeting luck for everyone. Uh, you get... Uh, what's your alignment? Neutral. Uh, four dice. Four hit dice worth of healing. Wow. Mm. Mm. So good. So, so that's uh, my 20 for the night. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Mornath, they explain, like, oh, that's the the mighty wizard, al hop Minaj. Minajus. Uh, the the all powerful dark wizard, um, yeah, we're hunting for the the sheaves of chaos. Uh, oh, I don't know you why. Think well, you think we we heard rumors that you had it. Uh, oh. that's what Al Hop had. He used divination magic and pinpointed you, and he's certain that you all have one of the sheaves of chaos. Does he know How what is he paying you guys? Chaos. Uh, we are loyal servants of chaos, so we we gladly follow. It's kind of like a cult, really. Oh no, no, I I dig chaos, but that guy's just a jerk. Kinda, you know, <laughs> you don't uh, you don't become a all powerful wizard in servitude to a demon and not be a jerk. I mean, it's just the way of the world. Sound logic. I mean, I really can't fault his logic, uh, Mornath. I mean, so it makes sense. Yeah. So now, Oak and Finn. Yes. When you're stripping down, it's rough. Yeah. Um, let's see. When you're stripping down Al Hop Menages, uh, they've got a long silver dagger. Uh, the strangely, their robe. When you get a chance to look at it. It's covered in uh, strange symbols, like strange zodiac type symbols. Oh, I am going to take his robe then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> zodiac robe. Yeah. There's um. There's also a wooden box, a small flat wooden box, hung with a silver chain over his shoulder. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, there's a small latch on the side of the box. It looks like it opens. Okay. Like I said, I'm I'm like categorizing it on the bar uh, yeah. next to his body, like just laying it all out. And then once I have it all laid out, I'm going to do detect magic. 
Uh, sure. I will find my character sheet for that role. So I whip out my <laughs> whip nice. out my mummified rat king, bend it into the circle of, yeah. uh, and then I start peering through it at all of this stuff, and I'll just cruise over the the mage as well, just in case. So the the mage doesn't actually have much on them that's magical. You can do see there's a strange magical aura radiating radiating out from the box. Grab a spell book. Uh. Yeah, he's got a, a spell tome, yeah. I can tell if different weapons or items of equipment on a creature are enchanted. Uh, that is a good roll, 20. And then rough gauge of the magic's strength revealed is the approximate level of the spell and general range of something bonus. So the it's pretty low level. So the, the thing that catches you... <laughs> the magical aura coming out of this slim wooden box matches kind of the weird magical aura that's over that piece of paper that you have. That the one that has the cigar matha thing. On yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I kind of figured. Um, and that's it. The dagger and the robes and everything are normal. Yeah. Have we opened the box to see what's inside it? No, no, not yet. I was casting that spell to see first. Oh, but okay. I suspect that it's going to be sheets like the one we have now. What's in the box? What's in the box? I'll flip the box, flip the lid open on the box. Absolutely. With his, like with his long silver dagger. like. Okay. Uh, why don't you go ahead? You pop the mechanism. Well, if you go to pop the mechanism and it's locked. Uh, now, mm. I need to retcon something. I missed something. You can actually see there's some kind of like magical enchantment on the lock itself as well um it's like a sure. it's got a, a faint twinge of necromancy on the lock and you kind of mm. get the feeling that maybe it has to do with how you open the box mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hey this box is locked <laughs> anyone good with locks magical or locks, locks. It, it might be it now. It might be a magical lock. Oh, I uh, I'm terrible at locks. <laughs> <laughs> now you do see a regular keyhole, and you know it looks like a standard lock there, Waylon. So I'll tell you what, I'll do what I can to open it. And you give you me know, that dagger. I'm just putting it out there. Maybe this guy would have his own key to open his own keyhole you know before you go yeah check his pockets you've got his uh robes there i figured i would have found it if it if it was on him since i was meticulously taking everything off of his person i mean it could be in his drawers but i'm not digging around in them like <laughs> i'll reach my hand in the drawers if it saves we, whale in a chance of we uh, well before that we could uh ask tadpole to slap him hard and wake him up Oh, well, I won't go sticking my hand in his drawers just yet, then. Do we no, you go right on the head. Do it, and then wake him up. Wait, before you do. <laughs> yes, wait, have wait, him wake up you with do. your... Hang on. Your what do you got, more now? <laughs> uh, when just I see in that case this is a... it starts casting, you just yank. <laughs> okay. uh, before I, before I, I see this about to happen, I ask uh, his, his my new friends, Hey! Has he got any tricks up his sleeves? If he if we wake him up, I mean, we've gotten his spell book off him and his clothing off him, but has he got any tricks up his sleeve we should know about? Uh, he is a powerful wizard. He's always got something up his sleeve. But you, pretty much like any other wizard, if you bind their hands and, you know, keep them. From... Uh, I'll call over and say, gag him just in case. Oh, I already stuffed the candle in his mouth. Okay. <laughs> oh, I thought that went off his butt. Oh no, Tyler! That's oh, inappropriate. That's for later. No, we said we didn't <laughs> check his prison purse. Oh, okay. <laughs> I missed that part. Now I think someone's going to have to. Not it. So also, uh, Mornath, they'll be looking like, oh, you're trying to open up that weird box of his too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know how to open it. Like it's easy. He just nicks his finger and then just smears a little bit of blood on the lock, and it pops right open. Oh. Just walk over, nick the wizard's finger on the box, and the nick box... the tip of it off. <laughs> oh my gosh! 
Yeah, you put a little bit of blood on the lock, and the lock Grab pops some scissors open. Scissors from behind the part. <laughs> you know, just the tip, because we don't really care how it feels for him. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here all night, people. At least it's late until before this we rate, we into. might not be. It's ten thirty so, yeah. central. The getting towards our rating. Yeah, the box pops. <laughs> I don't open. know what you mean. <laughs> all right, the box popped open. Inside is another one of these strange letters, like what you previously had found. And let me. Oh, what, did this guy just spam everybody to get them to come to this mountain? Well, this Ooh. one's different. This one is different. Now, also, you'll notice that the in the circle in the background, the symbols in those circles are the same kind of Zodiac-style symbols that are on his robes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you, elves and cleric, uh, you're fairly familiar with uh, Zodiac-style symbols like this. Looks like uh let me go ahead and just show it earth, and so water. there's the yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that way you don't have to guess at it there's the Thanks. what those things mean different rune symbols the void uh i was gonna go now, chaos, see, yep. now witness the majesty of our work uh, uh i can just cast uh comprehend languages <laughs> Okay, so that's oh, what you want to goodness. do. I know what the last line is. I'm just yeah, impressed that Bert was already figuring it out. Oh. Yep. Mm. Oh. oh, yeah. I, you figure it out. Ooh, 22. In which... 22 is read, write, understand, and speak one language for one hour. Terrestrial, supernatural, or extraplanar in origin. <laughs> Rock on. I like so, being fifth level. <laughs> there is your translation. Now witness the majesty of our work. Stone, stream, flame, give it form. A house, a prison, cast down the gods. Cast uh, cast wide the gates. Dragon. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hey, Chuck. Yeah. I actually speak dragon. That's that's awesome. That's one of my languages <laughs> chosen. It's on my sheet. <laughs> that's fantastic. Maybe that'll come in handy. I don't know. Uh -oh. I hope Nobody not. said nothing about no dragons on this mission. They did not. They did hey, not. dragons are classy, misunderstood individuals. Don't don't be disparaging no dragons now. Uh, oh, I love the hordes yeah, that they gather. Are... But I heard that dragons have a lot of gold. Is that true? And they like to drink. They're okay in my book. Hey, Wait, I mean, go. okay then. I... I'll, I'll be willing to give it the benefit of the doubt then. Now witness the majesty of our work. Stone, stream, flame, give it form. Hmm. And that first one mentioned water, fire. And... Water, fire. Or, uh, the first one says, uh, Great treasure hold, I offer my soul to end soul chaos. Earth, fire, water, I bid thee, bind the unbound and rule all. Now witness the majesty of our work. Stone, stream, flame, give it form. A house of prison, cast down the gods, cast wide the gates, dragon. So the the mm. robes also have the symbols. Not only do they have the symbols for, um, well, I guess yeah, they've got the symbols for fire, earth, water, void. Now, one thing you will notice is that they're it's pretty absent of air. And mm. also in the first one, four of the elements are contained for free. Um, like four are trapped in the circle, four of them are outside of the circle. Uh, Chuck, could you flash that one yeah. symbol diagram thing again? Yeah, let me. It, it doesn't seem to be in the handouts. Oh, yeah, let me yeah, do some wolf. adjustment. It's so good. the four animals are outside the, the magic circle on the first one, and um, everything but air are inside on it. They will show up for you in just a second here, Bert. So air is missing. Which and you said air was devoid of on the zodiac robes as well. Yeah. Right? So yeah, they sh the the glyph one should be there in handouts now, Bert. Yep, it is. Thank you. Yep.
Did you put, oh yeah, there it is, never mind. Thank you. I'm used to, to roll 20 on that. When you show all the players in this, it doesn't change the permissions. Right. So this one has only the elemental symbols with air trapped in the middle. Oh, also Sammy gave us uh, everyone a point of fleeting luck as well. Nice. Oh, nice. nice. Hooray. Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you. I feel like these alone don't contain all of the information we need. Hey, wait a minute. Gold, wolf, worm, and lion. What's the creature that has the parts of all of those? Chimera. Chimera, Chimera yeah. Oh, crap. Jinx yeah. by the Coke. Oh, no. <laughs> mm, it's true. Well, it has, yeah, I suppose worm would yeah. be the snake the tail. tail. The tail, yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's probably what's guarding this. <sighs> says dragon twice. Did I miss a line? I think I just didn't scroll all the way down on that first one. I think it's right. the whole thing duplicated. From what I can tell, it looks like it's the same thing in two different languages or something. Oh, okay. So yeah. the, the trick to these, you all would see it, is this spoiler alert for the, the adventure itself. Over up a bottom. Yeah, yeah. The If you kind of fold this piece of paper, you know, it's one of those mirrors where you bend it and you bring oh, the two halves together sure. it gives you the words. So that's what those are. I mean, I, okay. I can see. I get it. I see. I see what happened. Okay. Understood. Understood. You, can oh, the, you can get the yeah. same effect if you just put a piece of cover up the bottom, yeah. and your your brain will work out what the bottom is sure. supposed to yeah. be. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you need you need to see surprisingly little of a letter to recognize yep. a letter. It turns yeah. out. All right. So in the second handout. <laughs> We have airs contained with right. the other elements containing it. And it says stone, stream, flame, give it form. So right. earth, okay. earth, water, and fire, give it form. Would Stone, stream, uh, flame. So wait, say that again. Stone, stone, stream, flame, give it form. So making a vapor of some sort. <laughs> this puzzle's given me a case yeah. of the vapors. <laughs> well, All right. Well, um, we still we still have void and air. Now so you do look at that. recognize I, void is also the symbol for chaos. Right. Mm -hmm. That's so my detect magic mummified rat king. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a referring to it as void is. Um, it's not super standard, um, but you, you've you heard of so. certain sects, uh, religious and semi-religious groups. Yeah. One in particular would come to mind. You elven casters would be kind of familiar with this. You're old enough. Uh, a group that refers to themselves as theophages. Uh, theophages. Particularly groups that are aligned with striking down the gods mm. oh yeah they right. said uh, cast down the gods a house of prison cast down the gods cast wide the gates dragon so they want to use a dragon to so here's the question um do we try to reason with this wizard and see if we can uh kind of go in i mean the more the merrier the more firepower the better not to mention um, many of us are chaotic ourselves and kind of not feeling, I don't, I mean, this sounds kind of neat to me. Maybe he's got an idea. Before yeah. uh, we, before we wake him, him to attack us. I can cast ESP and then we wake him and I can start reading his thoughts. Yeah. And then we don't have to take the gag out of his mouth and he can't cast stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Good plan. That's... Tech the thoughts smart. of other creatures. Uh, What's that, Tyler? I said that's smart. I can concentrate and read deeper levels of thought with each round. So I need a pretty high. Hmm. Let me uh, let me look up the full spell. I was about to cast aid, but I remember we're not playing MC or um, 
<laughs> the game we were playing last night. Yeah. I'll put my new friends to work uh, looting the bodies. Sure, yeah. <laughs> so each of the each of the assassins, each of the dead ones, has a, a wicked, almost ceremonial looking dagger. Um, so you find uh, there was thirteen altogether. So you find uh, whatever the heck. Seven. Just seven of them, yeah. Math. Uh, let's see. What else do we got? Um, they are each wearing a, an oily chain. I said cloth, but uh, underneath that is an oily chain, chain uh, hobrick. So they got crude chain mail underneath of it that gives a plus four AC bonus. Mm -hmm. Um They've also got strange kind of bandages around their body that have like obscene prayers uh praising the chaos beyond the stars and it's just garfield comic strips yeah that's um, it yep and uh don't forget the bar patrons too we, we oh, want to loot them as well absolutely <laughs> um yeah tadpole has already been kind of hopping into their pockets as well i like to call that the vengeance fund We'll avenge ye for the low price of whatever you had in your pockets. You managed to find <laughs> seven gold, 13 copper, and 23 brass. Uh, and you do find a couple pieces of semi-nice jewelry here and there, maybe a couple rings. Nothing exquisite, but you'd say those rings you probably get like five to ten gold for if you were to go sell them. And you find uh, three rings altogether. Nice. Okay. Well, I won't hold out on my new friends. I mean, if these ceremonial daggers mean something to them, you know, they should. You know, yeah, they they're should like, take those. You know, <laughs> we shall use these to slay the gods. We appreciate you. Okay. Speak so. more on that uh, god slaying. What's that? Speak more on that god slaying. Yeah, what's that all about? What do you know? Or is that like high up in the food chain? Um, it's kind of high up in the food chain. You know, uh, Al Hap Menages knows all about it. Uh, we've just well. been promised to gain the opportunity to slay the gods, freeing all of us mortals from their wicked whims. Well, I'm ready to cast the spell. I'm all read up on it now. Okay. So we wake them up. I cast the spell. If he misses the will save, then all I have to do is concentrate, uh, and I can get the answer to a specific question, basically. If he's asleep, does to. he not automatically fail the will save? But we can't get him to focus in on mm. what we... It would just be whatever his subconscious mind is doing, I would imagine. Nope. Um, would you rather I have a blade at the ready or a hand full of grundle when you do this? Kind of both. No, 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 right. no, no, no. We were, we were going to offer a simple business opportunity <laughs> to this man first. I like, mean, I can be gentle if you need. I can, you know, I can give it the soft touch. He'll know I'll be probing his thoughts uh, mm -hmm. regardless. So, uh, but I can do if we if we wake him up and I cast the spell, and then if somebody wants to handle the questioning, I can just try to continually overpower and drill into what I want. After a certain amount of of rounds, if I'm still concentrating, I can get into his historical memories as far back as it can remember. Hmm. Our face man cleric should uh, be the one to question. I mean, obviously, I, <laughs> I only make friends when I charm them, so you know. <laughs> I don't I have probably... very much personality, so this is going to go Definitely throw my fleeting luck in uh, and then uh, maybe do a spell burn. We have a free reroll, so if it absolutely fails, we can save can it. Reroll. Okay. All right. So, but I think we could get all the information we need out of him with, with the spell and time. Because okay. if we, if I roll high enough, he, he's almost it's going to be really hard for him to, to okay. overcome it. So, give me the sure. order of events. What's happening first? 
Well, he has to be awake for you to cast the ESP, right? Or can you cast it while he's still awake and then it's still be in place when we wake him up? Or when you sleep, you wake him up and then it's working? No, well, it just says I can de detect the thoughts of other creatures. Um, it doesn't say they have to be awake or anything, but by, it's, cool. it starts when I start concentrating for a full round on him. I can start reading well, anyone, can I, can see, anyone yeah. I can see within 100 feet. So I can cast the spell. How long does and then he can last? Be, ah, see, now it says one round or more, and it's basically... Um, the higher you cast, the right? longer it lasts. Well, it's not it's not in the rolls. It's just as long as I concentrate, yeah, continue to so, concentrate, mm -hmm. I can read deeper and deeper. So as long as you're concentrating, it lasts then. If I stop concentrating, the spell ends. Yep. Okay. So are you waking him up or are you casting the spell first? Cast yes, first. Yeah. Have it, have it in spell. place. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Go I'm going to roll and then... Uh, I've got my two fleeting luck that I'm going to throw on that, like and that, that gets me a 20. Okay. Um, nice. oh, I can see like, one creature I can see within 500 feet. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can I can do that. All right, and then I'll just start concentrating uh, when and you guys can wake him up, and I'll just concentrate on okay. his thoughts. So, uh, Rock Gut. You wake him up? Toes, and we'll start asking questions. Tadpole slap him hard. <laughs> Tadpole hit him in his face hole. So as Tadpole wakes him up, this weirdly shaped wizard comes to like, ah, you foul beast, free me. No, no, no. He's mumbling. He's oh, got shit. a candle shoved in his mouth. Bash him on the head just once. Lightly. Just, just a tiny little squeeze. Just <laughs> squeeze wants to get into shut up so we can start questioning him. So yeah, he he uh be polite my mind to your mind, my thoughts yes. to your thoughts. Yeah, okay, <laughs> you you hear uh a retinue of cursing as his tender bits are squeezed Did unpleasantly with that uh, mouth. So you remember miners maketh the man. <laughs> That's right. He does not appreciate that. <laughs> Now, my friend over there has got his hand gripped pretty tightly around your nether bits, so if you're nice to us, I won't tell him to squeeze. Okay. Uh, Oakenfen, you hear the thoughts, as soon as I'm free, I'm killing all of you. <laughs> Ask him about the chaos sheaths. What do you know about the chaos sheaths? So... He mumbles. I now Oakenfen, you would hear the first thing thought is he corrects you. You imbeciles are the sheaves of chaos. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I just let that one wash over me. <laughs> but yeah, he would uh, note that they were created by the ancient Theophages to note the work of the. Uh, the Grand Alembic. So are you uh, open and amenable to uh, teaming up to try to get this done? He, his thought would be, why would I... Now, he's thinking this. Now, everything he's going through has to be translated through Oakenfin. Right, so in round two, I understand, I can start understanding any long-range goals and motivations associated with the creature's current thoughts and actions. So I'll give that to you, and you can convey that to everyone. So I'm just going to okay. say it, and everyone will know it. His yes. long-term goals, long ago, centuries ago, he's been magically preserved through great magic because he sold his soul to a powerful dark entity. He wants to free his soul so he can truly be free and not a servant of the other. In his studies, he learned of something called the Grand Alembic. The Theophages of past created a, a tool um, channeling the void chaos, the chaos that occupied the universe before the gods created everything. And then the gods drove back the chaos. And the plan of these theophages was to give life to the chaos, give physical form to the chaos 
by binding it with the elemental energies of this plane, giving it mm. life. And once the chaos has taken true form here on the material plane, the gods would run in fear, leaving the mortals in the material planes free without being subject to the whims of the gods. His goal is to do that. That way, the chaos can chase off the dark entity that he sold his soul to. So I'm guessing round three, where I understand his relationship with friends and enemies, is very, very much heavy on the enemies and like yes, the yes, friends. it is. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. That's uh, that's some interesting information. Round four says I can read uh, his recent memories. I still kind of have to one round for every day of memories. It says roughly like sorting through. Okay. So I'll just tell you, you spend some time, you study him while uh, the rest of the party pumps him for information on this and that. I'm not really able to get an inf any answer back because he's gagged, but, you know, his, uh, you find memories of him hunting down the sheaf of chaos that he has, finding out through rumors that there was another party that had another sheaf of chaos, and that was you and him using magic to hunt you down. Do we know how many sheaves of chaos there are? He would Does think, he know? He thinks that there's three. <laughs> okay. But he has no idea. He hasn't heard nothing about the third one. That was about what I was going to ask. Mm. What determines who gets the sheaths? Like, he didn't get one. He hunted his down from someone else. He that is something he's not actually familiar with. Something <laughs> happened and he doesn't know what. The theophages began scattering their knowledge throughout the the world in the form of these three sheaves of chaos. But he doesn't know why they did that. Hmm. Round five says I can read the creature's historical memories as far back as he can remember. I'm not going to try to go that far back. I would yeah. totally get lost in his brain. Yeah, essentially, um, he's just an evil wizard that has given just, up everything for power. So and, the, the last thing we need to figure out is if he would really be on board with joining forces. Because, you know, his goals, I don't see any reason to stop it. Yeah. So is is he willing to uh, on board with us or like is his first thought to stab us in the back as soon as he's able to? <laughs> he would, if you ask him in a, an appropriate way, he would come across with, um, well, you've mind washed or killed my current servants. My job is to activate the Grand Alembic, killing all of the gods on this plane, uh, freeing us all. Mm -hmm. There's like on this plane one or two gods that I really care about, so all of them got to go. <laughs> I feel like I'm not down for all of that. That's that's pretty. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Mm. Yeah, here's to wipe thing. out all the gods. Yeah, regardless. Well, no, hold on. He's he said all the gods on this plane. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. His motivations are plain as day. <laughs> yeah, he wants other gods to come in from other planes to take over, and that's not going to make us free. That's going to bring the elders back, and they're going to stick tentacles up our <clears throat> nostrils. Yeah, there's there's going to be a, go kind nostrils. of a in chaos of emergency break art <laughs> kind of situation. Uh, if Oak you know what Finn, I mean. Mm -hmm. There is one concern rattling around in there. He's trying to, to bury it, not necessarily from you, but from himself a little bit more. <clears throat> oh, that falls into round six. Understand subconscious thoughts, motivations, and underlying behaviors that it may not even be aware of. There, there is a concern that summoning the chaos to this world might unmake the world. Well, yeah. <laughs> I knew that right away. We but like it here. It's where we keep our stuff. It's where I keep all my stuff. It's a risk. <laughs> it's a very strong concern, but this Al Hapmanagis is willing to make that sacrifice if need be, but they aren't real excited about it. 
What the hell was that? This is where I drink my beer. Yeah, that's where all the beer is. All the beer. All of it. Well, so, there's we can talk about other spheres of existence on, on another day. <laughs> on this day. Um, does he have a headquarters nearby or a workshop? Hmm. Not nearby, no. Laboratory? No. He his home base is a castle set up in the the dark lands that are racked with volcanic activity and dark spirits. So I'm gonna make a note of that for later. <laughs> very far away, but he very much does have a you know an evil wizard's tower. The dark lands wrecked with volcanic something, something. <laughs> uh we're gonna call it whatever, Save you that know. For the, later the Kroger version of Mordor. All right. Mm. Crodor. Crodor, yeah. <laughs> Crodor more. Odor, Dormor, Hodor. Crodor, Dormor, Hodor. Got it. <laughs> I feel drunk now. <laughs> I'm working on it. I just kind of look at Rocket and I'm like, I got the location of his stuff. <laughs> 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 We're so yeah that later <laughs> he he would be willing to commit to a temporary alliance if you all help him finish the work of the theophages activate the grand alambic or however you pronounce that let me make sure i'm saying it right grand alembic alembic uh because an alembic is like a round alchemical thing with a spout coming off of it like they're going to distill something and spew it out into mm. something else and yeah the, he says you all suck and he's going to kill you as soon as he can get this candle out of his mouth so <laughs> well oh, all no. right then and i'll just start scooping up some uh no no, no. What, what he said is what he really <laughs> said is he wants to shoo all the gods away and unmake the world kind of isn't that right he uh, grumbled. Al Hat Minaj poking him in the nose. And he, he it's it's kind of like he chased the gods, yes, unmake the world. Hopefully not. I found it in your brain, little man. So am I killing him with these toads or no? Mm. I... I mean, I'd like to know where oh, this no. third sheep is. And he seems to be our only clue, but. He doesn't know. He said he has no he idea. Is. He does not know. So but it's kind of like the first time event of the three, two, one of the X coming Ooh. up after what you said. <laughs> uh, you I think off? I feel like I've learned everything I can learn. I kind of like come back to myself. I'm like, it's messy in there. He's been around for a long time and he's a very powerful enemy. That's all I can really yeah, he, he, seems, he seems like he'd be willing to work with us, but what he wants to do is going to destroy this yeah. bar. Well, the whole planet. <laughs> Mornath, were you going to say something? Yeah, um, I want to know what his current capabilities are. I want to look through his spell book to find out what he likely has memorized. Um, yes, you find out what he likely has memorized. Um, I'll tell you right now. If he's got charm person in there. <laughs> give me a luck. Do you want him or not? I, I don't want him to have it. Give because, me a luck check. Yeah. Or luck. Yeah, luck All check. Right. If you pass it, he does not. If you fail it, he does. Right. I mean, uh, we're keeping that book, right? Yeah. yeah, I just once we let his you know, once we let if we let him go free, if he's got charm, you know, it's <laughs> it's a bad thing. All right. Uh, oh yeah, that's well below my luck. Yeah, he does not have for like sleep and okay. paralyze and stuff too. Yeah, yeah. sleep paralyze, basic stuff uh, with some some really yeah. strange dark patron style <clears throat> magic. We'll keep his hands bound then. Um, it's still possible to cast a spell without hand movement, but that's like yeah. a special thing. He's got a candle um, stuffed in his mouth. Yep. Yeah. So, so we're not we're not then. I think he's very dangerous. I think. He would kill us if we don't go along, want to go along with his plans. And uh, I think... Sidebar, let's talk away from him. <laughs> yeah. Well, he knows all this already. 
I got it out of his head. <laughs> well, but he doesn't know what our end of it. Like he doesn't know, for instance, if we were just going to turn around and kill him. If we he doesn't know or... exactly what you know that he knows. Yeah, that's true. Actually, that is that is. <laughs> Though tongue twisting and mind bending it may be, it that's is like true. yeah, that's like the one time that that turn of phrase yeah, is just like, total like. like no, nonsense. you're right. That's right. Yeah, it's it's not nonsense right. at all. <laughs> he does we'll be back in I just think. a minute. Here's one to think on. Uh, put a tan. toad on his chest. <laughs> yeah, as I was to say, Tad, keep an eye on him. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, like licking at him. Bert, I'm showing you a document. It's the stats for your new assassin friends. Okay. Uh, they're your friend now so they'll they're your lackeys until something changes that yep. amazing so you got six assassins working for you now they're hanging out with my three duplicates that i made that just at this very moment wink out of existence oh <laughs> oh they were like all talking and having a good time and then whoa do they go voop when they disappear voop. <laughs> i hope so it's like implode <laughs> I have that on one of my spells too. It's going to be fun when our mirror images are having a chat while we're busy in the middle of a fight or something. That's just uh, too funny. All right. So what are we going to do with this guy? Do we make the offer and then turn on him later because we don't want his, we don't want his goal. Um, or do we end him now? If we end him now in the view of his, his people here, um, actually that's not enough for them to break the spell because I'm not, they're not being told to do it. Yeah, yeah but still, you know, I, I understand maybe we don't kill him in front of them. I'm yeah. not against that. But I do feel like we should just, you know, get it done. Yeah, he's been around for centuries. There's no telling what magical secret he has unlocked uh, and oh. can use or can... It, without... it really is kill him now or send him into the first <sighs> yeah. trap we see. In the dungeon. Um, I say I take rather, him out back and yeah, I'd rather do that. But uh, I just thought of something. Chuck, does uh -huh. he have does he have the patron spells in his book? Sure. Oh, that is an interesting twist. Then let me look at the yeah, because we just don't need him. We could just invoke that patron and get this done. Well, our no, own. no. What I'm saying is, if he has Ooh. a conventional patron and he's basically stabbing his patron in the back. Uh, by... Oh, that patron might want to know. Yeah, and then I almost took exercise too. Unless his patron, patron is, like... is out of this plane, right? right. Like if it's a because Chuck said it's like a dark elder patron or something like that. Mm -hmm. It might be that the deal he made with somebody with, centuries with ago is yeah. say it's Cthulhu or whatever yep, to sure get enough. Cthulhu to get through a crack in reality to get right. into this i'll have you know cthulhu plane. is a god of this plane yep yeah, he is in fact we don't know what plane we're on technically <laughs> fair well if we're going to take him out behind the shed um <laughs> just say just say we, we're we need... taking him to the constables for causing all this this mayhem and chaos and then just and throw him in that wagon back there <laughs> yeah you know we're he's going back home uh the quest continues but now you guys are with us he's got some things to take care of but what i was saying is uh we can't just you know slit throats and be done with it because if he has a patron bond he might be able to be brought back we need to like burn the body and go you know we need to salt the earth on this one <laughs> we right. gotta make sure he stays dead <laughs> bury him in concrete Mm. Yeah, yeah, I understand. You, you typically you chop off the head, you burn the body. We'll just feed yeah. him to like a thousand toads. Oh, It'll be fine. <laughs> uh, so I'll tell you, you going through a spell book, you figure out that he is a, he's bound to, Azi Dahaka. The well, that was the one I, I was going to take that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's of this plane then. Yeah, interesting. A demon prince of storms and waste. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so, yeah. I mean, he, they, the patron has influence on this plane, but being a demon might actually exist mostly in another plane. True enough. I mean, I mean, guess technically yeah. all of our gods exist in another plane. I would and imagine. The, and theoretically, I mean, if it's a demon, it's just that just means it's a powerful 
entity with magic capabilities that it's giving to him might not be affected by all the gods running away, might actually leave a void of power that the demon could then slide into. And then we're all under control of demons. Now, Oakenfin, you do get the idea from your time rattling around in his head that he does think that this is going to get rid of his patron. He's convinced and, of that, whether or not and that's, that's part of his true. thing, because he wants his soul back. Yeah, mm-hmm. it might be his sole reason for doing this. Yeah. Oh, I so saw that coming. <laughs> All right, well, let's get this over with now. Let's take him out back and dispatch of this guy. He's not going to be. He's going to be a problem. While you say uh, that, I explain to the six others that we're taking him to a very nice farm to retire with our family. <laughs> Hey, if they buy that, I know they're not smart enough to break the charm for months and months and months. I'm going to tell you, Bert, they're, they're some lackeys. They're not smart enough. So you've got them. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, you take the wizard out back. You thoroughly slay him, chop him to bits, salt, burn, scatter the ashes. Uh, it's a gruesome and bloody act, but the act is done. Well done for our body. <laughs> oh, Bowery. For I may not understand magic like the rest of you, but I've got my uses. Yeah. <laughs> As we hmm. watch the last of the ashes flutter away, I'll his patron's turn to Father name. Leopold. His patron's name is in the book. <laughs> yeah. What's I that? have demon summoning. I Ooh. now know his patron's name. <laughs> oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> For a later day, for a later day. Yeah. Yeah. It's the one it's one of two spells I have with no mercurial effect, as a matter of fact. Oh wow. Oh my you god. Yeah, as long as the demon doesn't escape from your circle and kill all of you. Hey, if that happens, no. you know. If that happens, Mistakes. it'll make great television viewing. Yeah, <laughs> so how'd they fail the dungeon? Well, they summoned the demon that they stole from a preliminary bad guy and killed themselves. <laughs> I mean, it's sort of similar to blotting out the sun permanently. That is true. That is ways to go. When you did that, you put the done in dungeon. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm just reading like, like, hmm, I've never summoned a demon before. Oh my god! If I know his true name, he's under my my control for one round. I think I have naming or the one that lets you know somebody's true name. Oh wow. That's a wow. dangerous game where we're lining oh, no. up here. Well, we've also inherited a bar. So uh let's yeah. see what fine alcohol he's got behind the <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna do stuff. myself a suicide run, just taking a little pull of every single tab he's got here. <laughs> yeah, they've got some run of the mill on tap stuff, you know, dark light beers, <laughs> this and that, maybe some mead. They've got a slim selection of wines, but they got some just some hard Hard liquor setting back there. Here in these. Let's not forget the cash box. They, I think, you uh, already got the cash box. That was that gold I gave you earlier. I think after rattling around in that wizard's head for a little while, I do need a good solid bottle of something. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't we, you all get settled up, the frogs dissipate, you hole up in the now empty bar for the night now that you probably just threw the bodies out back or something like that <laughs> big big pyre i'll at least bury them yeah oh say a few right. words over them there you go i am a viking, cleric after all viking funeral pyre there you go. You're, you're like just barely a cleric though because when you say you say a few words you're like a few words <laughs> <laughs> throws a bottle Jesus. of alcohol on them amen yeah. so the next morning, you all set off towards the mountain. I would like to know, what is your goal inside? Just find the treasure and get out? Do you want to do anything with the Grand Alembic? Trying I think to... we need to, uh, if we want to ensure our plane, we need to see if there's a way we can uh, dismantle it, especially since there's one more party mm-hmm. out there that could possibly Have, make this yeah. come true. Agreed. Yeah. Like in you think some we can ways, take out of the it. Grand Olympic. You were both talking at the same time. What's going on, Tyler, Jeremy? What are you going? No, ignore me. All right, Go Jeremy, ahead, Jeremy. What were you saying? I'm I'm all for sabotaging it because you know we need to 
have this plane up and going so we can spend our treasure. I am all about the quest for knowledge to strengthen my mystical powers. Um, and of course, gold helps with that sometimes. <laughs> but uh, definitely don't want the plane destroyed. It is, as as we've been saying, where I keep all my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> You all make the long trek up the mountain. Eventually, the mountain comes to like a, a sheer cliff. And you see this old, what looks like a monastery, built kind of towards the, the bottom of this cliff wall. As you proceed across this kind of flat plateau in the mountain, um, it's, it's wide. Like, it's real wide, like miles across it's bitter cold, but you all have taken, you know, you had proper, you know, cold weather gear to, to make it through. I'll be right back. Yeah. You do see what looks like um, cells, like, uh, like a monk's cell, like a small stone dwelling where a monk would sit in meditation. Most of them are collapsed and ruined along the walls, uh, but you do see the monastery ahead. What would you like to do? Any evidence uh, that a group has gone here before? This can't be well-traveled, I would imagine. No, you don't see any signs of travel. Okay. <clears throat> I, um, I'm i going to send my familiar ahead uh, a little bit. Just okay. a little ahead of us because of the telepathic link I have with him. Okay. So let me, there's actually a little flavor text. Let me give that to you so we can do the, the adventure justice. The high uh, circuit is blanketed in a thick coat of drifting snow and ice. Above the peak of Cigar Mahath looms, draped with a massive glacier that threatens to crash down over the valley. An ancient road runs the length of the valley, the massive stone pavers upset by the rack of frost and ice. And at the farthest reaches of the valley in the shadows of the glaciers, what can only be an apparent here at the very ends of the earth, beyond the reach of man or magic, a ruined fortress, half covered in drifting snow and fallen ice. And that's what you see here at the end. I'm like cursor showing up, but that's fine. Yep. Um... So you send your your familiar up ahead. The familiar scouts out. They don't find signs of anything. Like the snow isn't disturbed. These stone pavers are, like I said, just jutting out all over from years of frost and ice and thaw, pushing them up out of the ground. Do we want to check the ruined cells? Leave no enemy behind, even if it's just something that's been hiding in them or hibernating or I don't know. I'm all for looking. Um, we might find more information here. I agree. I mean, I'm not the world's smartest dwarf, but I imagine there's a reason they put through the effort of setting up these cells. Yeah. Sure. I find a nice souvenir we could sell of our little excursion. So you all spend probably a good, it'll probably take you like a half day at best to travel close enough to check the status on all these cells. Most of them are completely crumbled, caved in, just ruins. You do find one, um, and it's the one notated with an arrow uh, towards kind of the east, uh, right here. You do find one that's still standing, a simple hut of loose stone built into the side of the valley wall. The floor is covered in drifts of fine snow, and long glittering icicles hang from the ceiling. Inside is a small shrine uh, built into one wall. At the very back of this small hut, hung from a rock, is an ancient silk tapestry. I'm going to call everybody over and say, this calls for a celebration. What's uh, How's this tapestry being hung up? Uh, it's just uh, someone set like uh, pittens into the top of the stone and hung it off of that. I'm, right. I'm going to so try to take it, the tapestry down. Okay. Well, Bert, what were you going to ask? Yeah, what is the tapestry? What is it mm -hmm. showing? It is a holy symbol to one of the gods of law. 
that has been profaned. It's had curses painted over it. Um, now, Waylon, as you take the tapestry down, it reveals a split in the rock hiding behind it, a small passage that leads further back. Ooh. Well, I'll be. Take a look in there, gents. You head in? Yeah. The... Pull out a lantern and see ice... my way in. Yeah. You go back. The ice blue cleft opens into a high, narrow cave that scintillates in soft light. At the back of the cave is a silent, seated figure, seemingly lost in meditation. So there's a dude sitting back there, wearing similar robes. Not like super similar as the as the wizard, but it's covered in those same mm. symbols, the same zodiac style symbols. Can I sneak silently backwards out of this room? Yeah, give me your sneak silent. Okay. All right, there we go. Whoop. Boom. Eighteen. Yeah, you move out back. Uh, disturbing nothing. Wait, were we sure that was a human person and not just like a statue? Jake, it, your first uh, look, I've... it looked like just a monk of some kind in a deep meditation. It looked like a man covered in all the stuff that's that's uh, scrawled on the that uh, dead wizard's robes. That could be our third. It could oh, be. No, it could be our third. When now, you say I send Ted in Jake... first. I do want you to give no, I'll, me... I'll go in first. All right, real quick, Waylon, I want you to give me an intelligence test. Intelligence? Just a uh, general intelligence? Yep, just roll. Five. Okay, yeah. Other than the robes, you didn't see anything of note. Uh, now, there okay. was mention of Tadpole going in. Was Tadpole or Waylon going in? I can go in quite quietly. Do you want us to just give you like a good 10 seconds and then be following up behind? Yeah. All right, then. So pretty much good old operation. Get him Ray. Uh, Mr. Fenn, could I have a hold of that silver dagger that wizard had earlier? Uh, and before you go in, I'm going to cast um, Magic okay, Shield That was on you. a question for you. Uh... Yeah, it's it's just like a long silver dagger, right? Yeah. It yeah. operates as a normal dagger. The blade has just been silvered. Uh, Rock Gut, you said you were going to cast a spell? Yeah, I want to cast Magic Shield in case things go wrong. I'm okay. going to try to cast Magic Shield on you. Okay. 13, I don't think does it. Let me double check. Uh, a weak shield that does a plus two bonus to AC. So you, you do get a plus two. Okay. That's still plenty good. Yeah. All right. I'm going to try to uh, sneak silently back into this room so I can get a nice... A what's nice a, what's your light guy. source? A lantern. Okay. You move back in. And as you move back in, um, you actually move close to it. You can see your yourself and your lantern. It's giving off enough heat that some of the walls are starting to weep just a little bit. Um but you move up to this person in meditation and you realize they're dead. <laughs> Old Essentially the, the cold air in here, whenever they died has perfectly preserved their body. Shoo. Setting in All their right, lap. All right. I think he's, I think I got him. <laughs> okay. Uh, setting in their lap is a slim nice. box identical to the one Al Hap Minaj has had. Oh, nice. Mm. I'm going to put the uh, silver dagger in my in between my teeth. Sure. Hold my lantern in one hand and then with my free hand try to uh swipe the box as quickly as I can. Sure. Uh go ahead and give me your, you know, sleight of hand or pickpocket. Pickpocket. We'll call it pickpocket. Yeah, pickpocket. There we go. 27. Mhm. Mm nice. You Swipe it out from the clutches and like a finger or two gently break off of this corpse sickle. Um, as you turn around to move back out of the cavern, 
you see setting above the crevice is a large crystalline looking spider with gentle bits of water dripping off of it. Um, let me give me just a second. Crap. <laughs> now, Jake, only you like... can see that. Oh, dear. As the creature leaps off from above the crevice and attacks. Ooh. Oh, quick, quick, quick question, Chuck. Since yes. we slept, yep. do we get any hit points back? Yeah, go and take all your hit points back. Ooh, all right. So, Jake, what's your AC? 16 right now, thank goodness. Luckily... Your AC, you're able to quickly sidestep and avoid the bite of this spider. Phew. I'll let you have a quick action uh, in retaliation, and then we'll just go back into initiative. Well, my quick action is going to be to uh, make for the uh, entrance to this little crevice to get back out. Okay. And as I go, I'm going to say... Spider, big spider, big spider. Rotgut, how do you react to this? So, spider, big spider, big spider. Uh, I think I'm going to, once again, uh, try to uh, cast force manipulation, thinking maybe... Because the big spider was mm. in, the, in, in there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to block the door, is my thinking. Okay. Pretty solid. That's, yeah. Good thinking. Should go ahead and cast your spell. That's a creepy looking spider. 13, yeah. I don't think is going to do it. Let me double check. Apple sized <laughs> sphere of force that could be hurled as a weapon. Okay. You just ready uh, your sphere yeah. of force? Yeah. I just kind of look at everybody like it happens to every wizard sometimes. <laughs> The cold. It causes spell shrinkage. <laughs> That's right, yeah. yeah. My spell scroll is real tightly wound right now, you guys. Yeah, it's the same thing. i got nothing but buttons on me right now, either. <laughs> For Bounty, it's your turn. Speaking of buttons, I'm taking them full forward. <clears throat> you charge into this crevice. Hey. <laughs> you see the spider. <laughs> And uh, I think I'd like to just, uh, I'm not the smartest dwarf in the world, but I, I'm pretty sure usually they bite you to do their poison. So I'd like to shove my axe into its its, its maw. Okay. I'm trying to jam up its pincers. Go ahead. Yeah. That's what I do. Just get in there, do a deed roll. That's not a bad yeah, deed your deed roll pops at all. Off. So, oh man, so 23 for 15 points of damage. You shatter, you bury your axe in the center of the spider's face, and the spider shatters like broken glass and breaks apart and spills across the floor. It appears to have been made entirely out of ice. <laughs> hey, well, okay, I'm going to look around because I just assumed that that was too easy. You look around, and I'll... Let me... Yeah, hearing for yeah. Baudi laughing, I would be like, I think he's okay. We could probably go in. Yeah, you don't <laughs> find anything else in there. Just the dead monk. What's on uh, the dead monk? Just Can the robes, park? and it the, the, the box and the robes were all it had on it. Go ahead, Tyler. Uh, I was going to say... If we recognize the box, I'm going to cast Detect Magic over it mm. to see if it's the same sort of low-level magic with the... You you get the same kind of feeling from the other sheaves. The sheaves have some basic magical ability, and you're not sure. Maybe it's just, you know, something to help preserve them against the test of time. Uh, preserving them. Um, but... Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything else. The basic clasp doesn't even doesn't even have a lock on this one. Okay, that was what I was worried about mostly. Yeah. So let's open it and find the third page. Hopefully. Okay. So. okay. You. I'll hand uh, Oakenfen the box and I'll stuff the silver dagger in my boot. 
Mm. Okay. Like, you open it up, and sure enough, is another one, as the wizard referred to it, a music of, of the of spheres, chaos. dragon, dragon shattering. So I'm dragon gonna just shattering. Say at this um, point, comprehend languages. <laughs> you all. Oh, I already showed you that one. I can't do it on that computer. Let me do it on the other computer. You all are able to translate it. It's not even a test Jackals. at this point. Free, open, not <clears throat> obey, not God nor King. Hearken to devil and angels battle no more. So yeah, music of the spheres, dragon shattering, all shackles free. Obey not God nor King. Hearken to devils and angels, paladin Wayne. Who declare thus such a tragedy as man? Mm. Let me make sure you all have permission to see those. Now, this one didn't have symbols on it, correct? No. Hmm. Such a tragedy is man. How true it is. I mean, this just seems to indicate kind of what we already were guessing, too, basically, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, no offense, Waylon, you seem a perfectly fine human here. <laughs> Does he, though? He Man, just stole my that. dagger. Just stole my dagger. You, you, I was just holding on to it for you. Uh, I don't need it. I got a dagger. Well, now I've got two. But if a lycanthrope shows up, you better stab it with that dagger. <laughs> oh, you better believe mm -hmm. I will. Bay I'll stab it before it even knows it's there. Unless You'll it's get hiding it. behind me. Yeah, just stab it in its lycanthrope. <laughs> oh. Points. Points for that. Mm -hmm. It was a sleeper pun. More <clears throat> of a portmanteau, but I'll take it. Oh, shit. <laughs> that lycanthrope pun hurt me in my scroot. <laughs> Why? What? What was it doing in your scrote? <laughs> well, I don't Wolfman's know. Got nards. Oh yeah. my god! It, oh no! Oh no! So yeah, this was the only cell that you found that was still intact. Mm. Uh cool. I'm glad yeah. we glad we took the time to do that then. Yeah. So that so. was this. I'm taking that uh, very nice looking uh, tapestry and just slinging that over my shoulder as we leave. Okay. So yeah, the I'm... question is though, is who put the body in there and then hit it? Um, <laughs> that's the thing. Or did he think he was going to survive and cast a spell for the... Say, so was uh... it always a body? Hmm. That's true. It was in kind of a meditation stance, right? Chuck the body. Say that again. The, it was the in body. a meditation stance, yeah. Right. So, yeah. yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe he stuck back there just to heal and ended up dying. Mm -hmm. Right. Are we absolutely sure he's dead? His fingers snapped off. Hey there, Litching Hour. Thanks for coming by. Hey. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, nice. you're not... A hundred percent certain. You guys, yeah, strong we should make feeling. sure dead. Is, we should make sure dead is dead, right? Because as soon as you say that, I pull out my flint. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. just go kick him over and see if he shatters into yeah. a million pieces. Yeah. Okay, who's doing the deed? I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. I know what I'm here for. You guys are the brain trust. He's all for about it. I uh, am. We believe in you. Go damage some. Body. Yeah, for bounty. What do you do with this monk? Just a full-on Sparta kick into his chest. Chest collapses around your foot. His head and shoulders collapse down onto the floor and shatter across the ground. He is a monk sickle, completely bitter, like it was dipped, uh, like a rose dipped in uh, that one real cold fluid. Because words are escaping me at the moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Know what you mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Tony's quite the conversationalist. So, Been out icebreakers. Yeah. So just so everyone is aware, 
on the stream itself. I have spoilers. That way the viewers can see it. Uh, we're going to do a little trust system. Feel free to interact with chat. No need to hide. Just, you know, don't study what's showing up there on the map too hard. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to step away from the monitor for just a second. Be right okay. Back. Actually, I'm going to do that too. Don't unplug your computer. Actually, do we want to just take a few minute break? Yeah, sure. that would be Great good for me. Awesome. Okay. Sure. All right. I promise we, not to unplug my computer. Yeah, don't anything. unplug your computer this time. Uh, we <laughs> will. Yeah, we'll be back in just a few minutes. We're going to take a little, real quick, tiny little break, uh, and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. So Ooh, those yeah, of you, some fleeting luck there. Like oh, there we All go. Right. Who bought it for us? The Lich. Lich. Thanks, Lich. Thank you much. That's fantastic. Uh, yeah, we'll be back in just a few moments. Let me kick us over to a break screen. All right, we'll be back. It's a break.
We're back. People can see us and hear us. No, oh, I need that mouse. We had our little break. I bullied my wife into me into heating up some leftovers in an air fryer that friend and gave us, and they were delicious. Um, yeah, so we're back at it. We left off with you all finishing the exploration of this little cave, getting and translating the final sheave of chaos. Um, I think, if I'm correct, I could be jumping to conclusions here. I don't want to put words in your mouth. But you're ready to check out that weird monastery castle thing at the end of this valley. Seems like it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm ready to die. <laughs> I'm about it. Whoa, I didn't go that far. Hold on, though. No, Jindo. I mean, the thing is, it's coming for us any day. You just kind of learn to get over it. And make the best of your time. Yeah. Hey, Jen, thanks for swinging by. Uh, we'll catch you later. She said night. Oh, yeah. Good night there, Jen. I'm not taking on any little bastards. You'll check uh, <laughs> Jen in our Wednesday game as we play some more Rime of the Frost Maiden using Dark Trails, the Weird West DCC-based game. 100%. Nice. Nice. All right. So you all are in this valley. Are you heading to the strange monastery? Yes. yes. I'll say yes. So, I think we about have to. That's the next step. So we did check all the cells along the way. Right. Only one okay. of them wasn't destroyed. And you Checking. explored the one that wasn't destroyed. The rest of them are just completely caved in. Nothing in there. You poke through the rubble. rubble you don't find anything. Okay. Then I'm good. I'm ready to okay. hit the monastery. So you approach the monastery. Icy steps rise up to a wide stone platform lined with these bronze pillars so there's was it five pillars uh at the far end of the platform is a set of shattered great doors crusted with snow so as you move up you got immediately a pillar to the left and right and then another set of pillar and then another set of pillars so there's 10 all together and they're paired up each matching pairs on one side of this so you're walking down like a hallway of these pillars now it's these symbols yeah, symbols? there are symbols on them. Now, these pillars, are you all familiar with the, um, oh, what are the, the, like the big prayer wheels? Mm -hmm. Oh, you, the Tibetan prayer wheels? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So okay. they look very much in that, like you spin them with your prayers. Um, so if you go and if you inspect the, the pillars, these prayer wheels, the first one, uh, they're all bronze and they show these giant, like, you know, scenes. They're telling a story. The first one tells of the gods creating the universe, shutting out the great malevolent voids, depicted as a furious swirling cloud. The next one shows gods enslaving all the sentient races with their religions. The third set shows the monks, and you see these monks bear resemblance to like the one you saw meditating. What you've learned, they're probably theophages scouring the world, collecting wisdom from great teachers. The fourth set, you show the Theophages atop of a great mountain, which resembles the mountain that you're on. The, uh, I don't remember the, whatever the name of it is. Um, the whatever mountain yeah, range. Yeah, they're atop uh, of the great mountain and break the seal of the universe, welcoming in the void to scatter the gods. And the final one, it shows the Theophages reigning atop creation, allied with the void as the gods bend their knee to humankind. And it looks like these all, they all rotate, so you can like spin them like one of the prayer wheels. And then there's, yeah, the shattered double door at the far end of this. What looks to be moving into the monastery itself. So these are all like pictograms, right? It's all yeah. pictures? Yeah. All right. So when you say humankind, if we look at the, are there any elves, dwarves? I would athletes, say, yeah. Are they literally all human? No, it is the the mortal. The mortals. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of for what they got going here, despite the fact that, you know, Bubba's will close your ears. <laughs> It's that whole wiping out all of existence thing I kind of have a problem with. Yeah, yeah. Now, there's no depiction of that here on these. 
-hmm. it was a concern that the Al Hap, I've already forgotten right. his name, Minaj. that wizard. Yeah. Minaj. Yeah, Nikki. Uh, Minaj. Nikki. For, all, Minaj. <laughs> for what we know, these were protecting the universe from him. Right, he's been like he's him. been added for centuries. They it said in his head. So yeah, true. And the monk, one of these monks had one of the pages, but these are supposedly the theophages that had scattered the pages out in the world to begin with. Yeah. Well, we've uh, we've got some pictograms on some of the handouts before they were translated to. That might be handy. Just, just don't know that I want to. I, the gods have to protect against something, right? The void, apparently. Yeah. But what's what's in the void is the question. That's the unknowing thing. Is it better or worse? I mean, life's not bad. Well, for it us seems right now. It, it seems more that it's. Uh, it, it's freeing uh, those slaved by the god. So maybe it's just a vast nothingness, like literally a literal it's not void. a, yeah, yeah, a literal void. Uh, it, it'll make a realm without the gods. Why don't they uh, just give up this temple and go to a life of stealing stuff? That all sounds too hoity-toity. I gotta but, say, I... But now... That first page that we got, sorry there for body. That's okay. No, the no. first page. I bind. I bid the bind the unbound and rule all. Now we're talking about well, we're talking about ruling. Somebody's going to be ruling somebody else. And Humanity. it does show yeah. on the fifth pillar, the theophage is ruling, allied with the void. So they want to replace the gods. That could be a translation. What's the depiction of the void? Um, swirling, malevolent, furious clouds. Hmm. Okay. Some good sculpted if we know it's malevolent. That's yeah. pretty clear. <laughs> yeah, the, that's the pretty information. Oh, it's, it's got the eyebrows. So yeah, you know it's, it's got malevolent. the angry eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> so the, uh, no. the information you did get from Al Hap is that the whatever they were doing here was to try and bind the void, the chaos, into physical form here in the material plane. The unbound, right? Bind the unbound and rule all. That's the thing I don't like. And maybe that's yeah, what, maybe they came into their senses and they were like, "Oh, this is bad. We gotta, we can't destroy the pages. We have to disperse them." Yeah, I don't like that either. I mean, I'm not saying things are a cakewalk now, but I like the whole like work hard, play hard sort of thing. But Drink that's on beer. my own terms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. uh I am personally fond of the whole not being subjugated to. That's fair too. So, so what do we do to kick this whole like bit of shenanigans in the taint? Well, we it find up. whatever their uh, alchemy bong is and smash it. The <laughs> great <All> right. <laughs> alchemy bong. <laughs> I love it. Let's find an alchemy bong and smash it then. Yeah, find like an alchemy kind of bong and get smashed. No way. Uh, wait, oh, hold on. <laughs> it's, a it's a different. Well, thing. I mean, instructions you know, unclear. Use over. bong. <laughs> <laughs> we have previously established that we do have papers. Mm, just a <laughs> <Right>. giant. <laughs> we had papers and vapors. Giant oh magical gosh. papers. They roll themselves. <laughs> you know, maybe that's why the void is depicted as a malevolent cloud. <laughs> <laughs> It all makes sense now. Chuck was on the leveling cloud there for a second. Did you see that? Look at oh, right on the stream just now. <laughs> oh, the void has overtaken the Chuck. Wait a minute, wait. I'm not putting Chuck in charge of nothing. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> killed me. The gods aren't kneeling. They're just taking a nap. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what's going on? I want the knife, <laughs> please. I kind of want to spin one, but I really kind of don't. Well, I thought we were, and that's how we're getting oh. the uh, we're getting the story is by spinning. Yeah, I was all that's about I just craning my neck around them. I didn't live this long. Then, <laughs> yeah, I would Go say ahead. looking around it, you're getting the story. 
Can okay. And th there are four of these pillars? Five. Five pairs. pairs. Five pairs. Oh. Uh, well, our handout B did have five pictograms in it. Like five symbols. So align the prayer reels in order with the symbols? Then maybe the doors open. Well, it's well like the doors are broken the... and shattered. Here, you can. Yeah. I wasn't clear on that. You could just walk in. No. Nah. I, I gathered the doors were shattered. I think I don't think we need to touch these things, whether they do anything or not. I mean, the the best case scenario is we spin one, it makes noise and only attracts a small monster. Worst case oh, well. is a lot worse. Yeah, yeah no, I, I think get you're you. right. Let's uh, yeah. yeah. Let's check out the ruins of this door. So does the door look like it was smashed open or does it look like it was open and just fell apart over time? It was open and it fell apart over time. Okay. So not like 50 ice spiders climbed out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Which is well, what gets attracted if you spin the... the uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so are you heading in? Yep. Yeah, right. I think so. Sure. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Why not? Oh, I'm gonna send Tad. <laughs> never <laughs> say that. Okay. <laughs> so much. I always say that, but fortunately, I always go in first. Since I don't have dark vision, I will light my lantern. Okay. So you move into the initial part of this monastery, and it's kind of like a a complex, like almost like a maze of. Uh, cells, not, not like gel cells, but like, you know, like the the cells, like in like a monastery, some where the people where the the religious people, you know, the monks or whatever lived, like plain individual, yeah, rooms. like small basic rooms. Um, it takes some time making your way through this basic maze, but eventually you'll be able to find your way out. Um, does anyone want to kind of search through? these rooms as you go through if anyone wants yeah. to search yes we, we need to clear rooms to make sure there's yeah. nothing on our back trail so yeah we need to clear rooms mm -hmm. in case there's any treasure i mean traps yeah that we need to find um, um, magical both. tomes yeah everyone go ahead and roll me a d16 d16 okay and then you can wow. uh if you want you can add your luck modifier to it and elves have a fine secret bonus okay Thirteen. Okay. Uh, so uh, Oaken, uh, Oaken Fen, uh, moving through these cells, kind of searching, uh, you find just a bunch of sleeping mats, kind of frozen, falling apart due to time. Uh, Father Leopold, you find a bundle of old scrolls, and you kind of look through them, and they're kind of extolling the freedom offered by the beings that uh, that reside in the great void. Um, these scrolls theorize that the beings long to join us in existence to free humanity from the tyranny of God and the fates. So, you know, it's religious pamphlets to, you know, bring people into the... Except the, their God is the lack mm. of gods. Yeah, yeah. It's chick tracks. Yeah. Um, oh, gosh. <laughs> um, let's see. Who got they're, that? They're warning us against playing tabletop role-playing games. That's it, exactly. I mean, fair. Look at look at the, the madness that's wrought in all of our lives. <laughs> Wayland. What it's done to my ears. Uh-huh. Wayland, you find three clay beakers, each of them containing a gray powder that you're not familiar with. Hmm. Um, Would it be a possibility to uh, just I don't snort know. it? Well, maybe not snort it, but just dip my finger in there and just kind of examine it, it, see if it looks it's... like an ash of some form. I will tell you that maybe if you ask some of your elven friends or your or cleric, yeah, or magically inclined buddies, yeah. So magically inclined buddies, when you see this, you know it's a substance called soul ash. Um, it's got a number of uses, um, but you would know that you can also use soul ash to enhance your spell casting, um, inhaling the powder. Um, you got to make a little, little, will check, make sure that you can handle it. But if you succeed, you get to add a 
plus one die size to a single spell check in the following round. Um, mm, nice. But if you don't pass it, it does leave your soul open to the uh, infestation by the spirit of... Because soul ash is made from people. Oh. So yeah, yeah, if you don't pass that check, you might accidentally get possessed by whoever this ash belonged to originally. Eh. Oof. Fortunately, this party's really good at will saves, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That, that if I remember something from our pregame, will save is our strong point. Is that mm. it? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Now, rot gut, sadly, you don't find anything. Just empty cells with nothing in them. Uh, let's see. For Bowdy, I need you to re-roll. Okay. I uh, will. While you're re-rolling, um, Mornath, you find a sanctified prayer wrap inked with theophagic with a theophagic cipher um you do get the feeling that it has some kind of boon to chaos aligned people okay uh snag that yeah so um for bounty you actually find a body of a frozen frozen theophage um like the one you found out in that small cell yeah. out in the valley. Uh, frozen solid like the other one. They've got the, a robe, <clears throat> a basic like ceremonial type dagger, but nothing else really on them. Well, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'll just give him the same treatment I gave the last one and give him a downward spurt to kick right into the center of go. his region. There you go. You do so, destroying this uh, the body of this frozen theophage <laughs> sword through the pieces there you go for anything of interest so nice after... to meet you <laughs> after that was a slow burn uh-huh uh-huh <laughs> after a handful of minutes of searching uh and going through those you eventually find the path leading deeper into the the monastery uh, you come across a large chamber that was once covered by a great dome that's long since collapsed onto the floor. The ice-white buttresses still rise to support the collapsed dome, like a rib cage of a skeleton long picked clean. So, like, it was this dome thing with these supports going up. Now all that's left are the supports. In the center of the chamber is a bronze globe, about eight feet across. <clears throat> It's surrounded by three smaller globes, each supported on slender brass rings. The floor all around is littered with rubble from the collapsed dome and crusted over with ice and drifting snow. Uh, the hall is oddly still, kind of like the, the universe is holding its breath while you're inside here. The globes have mm -hmm. symbols on them? They do. Um, the Each of the globes has a symbol for the three elements. Earth is on one of them. Fire is on another. Water is on the last mm -hmm. one. Uh, now you, those are the smaller ones, right? Those are the smaller ones. Now, <clears throat> looking around in here, besides the doorway, because you're in the circular room, besides the doorway you came through, there's five other doorways, each with a stone arch over it. And over each arch etched into the wall next to it um, is a symbol. And rather, it's two symbols kind of merged together. So the doorway to the northwest shows the element of fire in the house of the wolf. The northeast is water in the house of the worm. Southwest is earth in the house of the lion. And finally, the southeast is air in the house of the goat. So is an earth, fire, water the order? Fire, water, earth, air. So all four well, elements are represented on the etchings above the doors. Was, um, so from the first thing, it was like in soul, chaos, earth, fire, water. Right. The first one is earth, fire, water. The second one, uh, 
didn't have it had the symbol with the four with air in the center and the other the other ones outside the other four outside yeah mm. music of the spheres strange uh do the spheres move uh yeah you can rotate them they don't seem you to do a, anything when you move so a starts with earth b starts with stone which is Earth, basically. Yeah, which is Earth, basically. Um, let's see. Let's see, I don't know. So, I, <clears throat> I feel like it's probably Earth, Fire, Water. Mm -hmm. Because... Well, that second that, one... That first one says, bid, I bid thee bind the unbound. The second one doesn't have... Doesn't have uh, any type of listing. No, but it. Do, I mean, it's got stone stream flame, which earth, could fire, be a trans water. Yeah. translation of earth, right? Water, fire. Yeah. But both of these mention dragon. It says stone stream flame. Give it form. Yep. So in all three, uh, all the the first two cases, earth is still the starter point, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. so, right. So let's move the Earth sphere to a position that puts it between the large sphere and the southwest door. And then if something happens, we stop. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll tell you. You do so. And so the, the door with Earth on it was the southwest arch. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, nothing happens. I mean, that's better than death. It is. So yeah, the, the there's the big globe with three little globes around it. The three little globes have earth, fire, water, and then there's the four archways. And the, each there's archway. There's nothing on the large globe. Nothing on the large globe. I'm sorry. So mm. after we moved the. The globe, what happened? Nothing. Nothing. So Nothing what if the happened. large globe is this plane? Or what if we have to go through all three before something happens? <clears throat> what if it's not, if you just stop on Earth, you didn't finish. Right. It was like you had to do the, if you don't do the full rotation, it's nothing doing. You just got well, blue balls. It does say whatever the magical stone equivalent of blue stream balls flame is. give it form, a house, a prison. So what if the large globe is... A house or a prison. Mm -hmm. It could be that this globe is the prison for. The I mean, the void. first one mentions chaos for the void. The chaos. or the second one specifically mentions a dragon. So, yep. well, like regardless that. of all that, we're not wanting to free. Right. <laughs> let's go void. check out the yeah. other doors. Let's go check out the other. Yeah, doors. let's go yeah. check out the doors. Left. Yeah, that's <laughs> why I don't want to do the puzzle. Definitely not because I wasn't countenancing it or nothing. <laughs> Right, right. So if we're going to check out a door, which door do you want to check out? Let's see. What were the four? Earth. The earth door? That's going yeah. to be the... Southwest. Yeah. Southwest. Left. The left door. <laughs> okay. The Southwest, left which path. would be the left, the first door. Uh, do we get an updated right. map of this or no? What's that? Do we get to see an updated map of this or no? Um, I'll tell you uh, no. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Just curious. No. Uh, no. No. I understand. So you poke your head through the southwest door. The floor of the small uh, gallery collapsed long ago. A jagged crevasse bisects the floor like a knife wound, cut in the belly of the earth. The icy floor is canted at a dangerous angle towards the rift, and flagstones teeter on the edge, held in place by little more than frost and ice. Mm. <laughs> like all gathered at the doorway like well that sucks <laughs> yeah that seems unfortunate anybody got a rope uh, nope. yeah yeah i'll reach into my backpack and pull out a 50 foot rope and i'll even put a little grappling hook on the end i was kidding well, scare I was... that shit okay well, i'm a burglar and i don't kid around with my tools this is a grappling hook and a rope. 
I have some iron spikes I can pound into so, uh, some mountain. Yeah, shoot. Waylon, what are you doing with your grappling hook and rope? Well, I guess nothing. I didn't have the idea. I don't know. I mean, what's on the other side of this like area? Uh, you look into this room, and it's just a small chamber with this giant crevasse cutting through it, but it just looks like a plain room looking in. Small, small room. Mm -hmm. More than 50 feet across? No. Uh, for Bodhi, could you be a wonderful, wonderful man and throw this grappling hook to the other side of the room? Well, I've never been anything good at being a man, but I'm a fantastic dwarf. I'd be glad to do that much for you. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and give me uh, that strength test. Ooh, strength test. Okay. I'm not I bad at some that. Of that. I, I do. I do have some of that. All right. Oh, player configuration. <laughs> hey. You toss it across. But I'd like to tell you, I'm a bit in my cups at the moment. <laughs> you... Don't clear the crevasse, and the grappling hook attached to the rope kind of drops into the crevasse. Uh, as you're pulling it up, you can feel it kind of catches on something. Uh, you can try and give it a little bit of, you know, slack and try and pull it up mm. or try to strength it through. Uh, but right now, the grappling hook is trapped down in this crevice. Well, you know, happens to be sometimes I went too deep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I got an idea and I'm going to try to cast force manipulation to create a force bridge over the, the gap okay that's alright for Bounty I understand dwarves like to go deep oh wow holy that is a holy. crit success everyone gets a point of fleeting luck <laughs> amazing okay as he just makes a bridge that's... out of nowhere. <laughs> Actually, like four force walls or something. <laughs> like, so I think here, you I'll could just make a crazy. force floor and everyone could just walk across it. That's basically what's happening here. Yeah. It lasts 2d6 plus caster level days. Wow. 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 20 God. feet square per level in size. Oh. That's crazy. <clears throat> so, yeah, your minimum of two days, 12, 12 days. days. <laughs> essentially this now is a force floor you can all walk across the Ooh. thing is man i can i can move with this. concentration move it right so i mean i could i could bring this thing with us through the rest of the dungeon if everybody's patient <laughs> yeah that's oh gosh well i mean amazing th at the very least when we're done in this room you could at least maybe just put it up around the globe <laughs> just in case mm. yeah just saying yeah. <laughs> so yeah you all Whoever's brave enough will wander out across this invisible floor, peering down into the crevasse. There is, it looks like there used to be statues in this room that when the crevasse formed, they all slid into the thing. You can look down and you can see there's giant statues of like a lion, a basculus, a warrior queen, a, you know, a warrior of some kind. Uh, the statues are covered in jewels and precious metals, and they're all just kind of wedged into the walls of this crevasse. Uh, the closest one looks like it's like 40 feet down. Do we Ooh. want to risk going down there to get some precious metals? Uh, we can ride the force elevator down, my friends. I was no, going to say, he could my, just make, like, uh, horse stairs or something. Does, Any, does, anything he can imagine. Does my distinguished nose let me tell the difference between different types of metals? Like, how precious is the stuff down there? Um, let's see. It's the good stuff. Is it say loot stuff? later, secure first. <laughs> yeah. He, he can just bend the wall up and true. close off that door. <laughs> so I'll tell you. There's not a lot of actual like precious metal, a little bit of gold, a little bit of silver, but the gems that you can see would be worth a fortune. That's the good stuff. So long as we survive all the other nonsense, we definitely need to get back to there. Or, you know, we could just take it all and leave. Hmm. It's fortunate enough for me. 
Mm. I feel like there's knowledge to be gained yet here. Twist my arm, okay. Then the dismantling of the machine, whatever it is. Right. That's true. I would really hate for some other arsehole to come through here later and turn this thing on and wipe out existence. Yeah. Yeah. Not to mention, we read all those things about dragons, and um, this wall will protect against uh, dragon breath. Just we'll, just we'll just take the firing pin from the mechanism. We can just leave the rest as long as we have the key that <laughs> makes it work, I think. Later. All right, then. All right. On the way out. We'll do that all on the way out, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So where are you going? Are you going to drag this force wall with you? If you guys don't mind me concentrating and moving a little slow, I mean... Can you just sit on it and, and concentrate? So actually, one of the other things does say you could it, it will carry up to a certain weight in pounds, <laughs> and it's a small level one. So I'm thinking we could just ride this thing. Uh, <laughs> oh, we're all like boys, this. like... Mm. <laughs> the boys are back in town! <laughs> At 10 oh, feet the around. boys are back in town. <laughs> okay, so floating um, uh, on top of your now invisible magic carpet, <laughs> where's your next, what's the next thing you're doing? If you're not going down in this crevasse right now. I'll leave the crevasse alone for a bit. So, so oh, feast. hold on, there's some, that thing with the lion, maybe the lion statue is special in some way? Could be. You mean in the crevasse? Yeah. Mm. Maybe we should just take a look at that one and then and so, go away. Uh, Ron Gut, can you control what passes through your for force wall? Um, you know, let me read it because with each spell result being slightly different, it's it's a little hard to say. Because some are like, write it. Others are like, it's a shield, right? Yeah, so... but it says the caster may cast spells through the wall. Right. I think it f acts as a physical wall aside from my spells. Okay, so you couldn't... If you force this down the crevasse, would it just push the statues down? Well, it says he can shape it. Yeah, I... Hmm. Any, anything up to its maximum size in square feet. So how about I make it big enough to get across and small enough if I rotate it sideways to go down? So, you so it's like a it thin like... rectangle, like like a like a 10 feet long by, f what's the crevasse, like five feet across if I turned it sideways? Something it like down? that, yeah. So essentially what you're, I, what it sounds like to me, your plan is, is to send this down and use it like mm -hmm. an elevator to lift the statues up. Or we go down. It's a. It's up to what the group thinks. I think we could do either. Well, I'd at least like to get my grappling hook back. <laughs> uh, so what do you what do you think? I lift up that one statue you're interested in to look at. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll see if I can hook the hook <laughs> on the way back up. Thank you. Yeah. All just right, so. uh, shake this whole thing like a finger and just get that right off of there. <laughs> So I'll tell you, you send it down, you retrieve the statue, you retrieve the grappling hook. It's a rampant stone lion with ruby eyes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and you would know rubies of that size are going to be worth, you know, like 500 gold each. Not bad, not a bad haul, not a bad haul. Oh, we're, one, two, three, four, we're done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, paid paid uh, for our well that paid for our drinking at the bar. But we're right. saying, bar, well, that'll so. get a renovation <laughs> to your bar. <laughs> yeah, because oh, it's our bar now. We, we've determined. Yeah, you, yeah let's you, buy the town the bar is in at this point. <laughs> uh, can we name it the Loaded Toad? <laughs> That'll about More pay to shine my armor. Set up a taco stand. Can't be like the Three Toad Toad. Oh no. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, so we've gotten yeah. one statue out. Is yeah. that essentially what we're our patience level is for messing with the that statues? That sounds fair. Like yeah. we'll just do the rest later. Yeah, if we come yeah. back after not destroying the world, we'll we'll think about it. I'll just take a I'll just take a quick you know ten twenty seconds. Pull out my crowbar and maybe pop those rubies out. Sure, that's fair. You've got and two now we've got large rubies. A, yeah. Yeah. 
Sorry, Chuck. I was going to say, I'm just going to keep it that 10 by five. Cause I think according mm -hmm. to this level, this version of it, I don't think I get to keep reshaping it. Mm -hmm. So we have a 10 by five impervious wall that I can move around for us like a big sheet of plywood, basically. Right. The South East, I guess would be the next left. Southwest, Southeast. Okay. That's southeast. the air goat. So the southeast takes you to, and let me make sure I get the words right. The passage descends worn stone steps to a low ceiling tomb. A massive stone slab serves as the roof. Anyone brave enough to enter must crawl through the circular portal into the chamber below. Um, this space is, the roof is maybe like five feet. Oh, so uh, there's plenty of clearance then. Okay. Yeah. Dwarf. Right. <laughs> Underground stuff. <laughs> oh, we, could, like... we could just lay down on this portable force wall and just <laughs> hover across. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was getting claustrophobic just thinking about it. So I'm just going to sit on the stairs. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so looking into the room, you do see at the very far end, there are stairs going up. Now, especially you, Father Leopold, looking uh -huh. in, the floor is littered with different holy symbols. Ooh, that's not good. And each holy symbol seems to be profaned in some way. In the center... I'm going to clutch mine closer to my chest. Yeah, in the center of this room is a squat stone pedestal, and on the top of it is a large clay jar rising to the stone ceiling. So it's like the stone ceiling is perfectly the height of this jar and the stone slab it's on like the ceiling is touching the top of this jar um and you can see that there is one of the elemental sigils drawn onto the jar but you would have to move in closer to see what it says and yeah at the far end are stairs going up so we could ride this thing and not touch the floor and take a peeky peek without touching that thing too. Yeah, sounds good. Yep. Yeah. That's a good plan. All right. Okay. Now you hear me, Tadpole, you stay on this. Don't go touching the floor. So when you all move in <laughs> Now, Father Leopold, as soon as you move into this, uh, it's a it's a silence like you've never experienced before. Not like sound, mm -hmm. but like the you feel the spiritual connection like to off. your God just completely gone quiet. Hmm. As you all are slowly making your way through this room on your magical force wall. Anything you want to do or you just want to make your way across? Now, like you said, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of profaned holy symbols from every different religion scattered around the floor in this room. Oof. I mean, I don't want to touch anything. Yeah. As we pass by the uh, the large jar, what elemental symbol is written on it? Air. That was the only thing that was on it is the symbol for air. Yeah. That was also the symbol next to this room, right? Yeah. Yep. Air. Goat. Hmm. Well, let's air on the side of caution and maybe not touch that thing. But Ooh. there is a passage through to the other side. Yep. Yeah. On the far side are stairs going up. I think maybe us not touching this profane floor was important. I'm thinking maybe maybe us just getting over to the other side is is the goal here. Hopefully. Yeah, agreed. So let's ride this thing up the stairs. Okay. See what's yeah. on the other side. You We're make your way. Wolfing it. Yeah. You make your way up the stairs. And you come to a room. And on a trio of short stone steps that rise up 
uh, to a tall bronze portal. Flanked by a pair of stone pillars. Atop each pillar stands an enormous stone figure. Elephantine in aspect with great tusked maw and a ponderous belly and an exotic polearm. So like the Luxodons from like Magic the Gathering. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. um, the statues glower down from on high as if to dare mortals to approach the barred gate. But setting in front of this gate are two massive bronze uh, braziers. Uh, each have been toppled at the top of the stairs, effectively barring the door closed. Hmm. Uh, a house, a prison, cast down the gods, cast wide the gates, dragon. I don't know if we want to open that one. Are there any feelings of there being some sort of trap here or something like that? <clears throat> that would be a question for Waylon. Yeah. Yeah, like detect like magic, a... I think, as sure. well. Yeah. You take you uh yeah, you take the magical route, I'll take the physical route. Yeah, I just we're underground and all, I thought I'd ask. Uh so I'll tell you right there with Oaken, if you want to look up the specifics, but I'll tell you you detect some faint magical hint on the opposite side of these stone doors or these mm -hmm. brass doors, but nothing in the else in the room pings as magical. Okay. Nothing else in the room. No, not even the floor, not even the floor. Now even Hodowink boys definitely don't want to open the doors though, because there's something magical on the other side. It's not big <clears throat> and it's not strong. Could be big <coughs> but far away. Maybe faint. True. Well, maybe it's a little baby dragon. Or maybe it's just a goat. Maybe it's a pinhole to a dimension of ultimate chaos. <laughs> well, that just sounds like a good time. It does. It does. Until, until they enslave or eat us all. <laughs> Man. Sounds all like a good, good time times to come to an end. All right. A... I'll uh, get down from the force surfboard. Mm -hmm. and go check out the brass doors for any physical traps. Please roll. All righty. The force surf five. You are confident that this door contains no traps, magical or mundane. Uh, this is about the least booby-trapped door I've seen since the last door I've seen. <laughs> that wasn't booby trap. Yeah, it was clearly not booby trap. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, y'all thinking something bad behind here, though, maybe. Yeah, not even necessarily bad, just magical. And again, we mm -hmm. don't want to start the process, so you know, touching as little right. as possible is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Fortunately, uh, touching as little as possible isn't going to get us anywhere. I'm worried. But I don't think touching this door will yeah. do anything too particularly wrong. For well, well you, you say not getting us anywhere, but I mean... What are we agreed upon that we're trying to do here? We're trying to make it so that someone can't do this, right? Right. So yeah. we need to we find, find the Alembic. The that, yeah. Exactly. Or make it so that you can't get to it anymore. Got to right. find the thing, steal a piece, break it, hide it, send it into another dimension. Who knows? Something like that. I just tie it to a wood shoe and throw it in the ocean. Well, we've got some other places to look yet, so maybe we do that and we... Yeah. Sure. Before we touch anything, let's inspect everything. Yeah, that's fair. like a museum visit. Ooh, Don't yeah. touch the art. <laughs> I wasn't too good at museums. Cut to a shot of your character, just like being like like touching everything in the museum as a kid, uh, licking statues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the mummies coming to life and chasing them around. <laughs> that's the moaning Lisa. Oh, um, <laughs> So yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think we check the rest of it out, right? Sure. As much as we can. Next room, gents. Okay. Pile on. You Do you want to go back to that circular chamber with the four doors? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so. So have you explored the two southern doors, southwest, southeast? What's your next door? <laughs> South or northwest or northeast? 
Uh, northwest. Yes, okay. the more left-handed path. That's it. So this is the element of fire in the house of the wolf. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to put that away yet. Looking in this room, wide circular steps descend down to a great brazier atop a pedestal at the heart of the once opulent chamber. The collapsed stone walls are still flecked with gold paint and the enormous braziers have long since been extinguished. Uh, but this room's no less majestic for the drifting snow and ice. Speaking now, of majestic, before we enter into this room, I'm going to turn my lantern off. Okay. I'm going to trust in the elves and and guy who might have been an elf at one point, but I don't know for sure. And the dwarf. I'm gonna I'm gonna trust the dark seers. To see for me. Ooh, the dark seers. That should be you, our you, you said the house of the wolf and name. what else? Fire in the house Fire of the wolf. Fire and wolf. Now also Fire, yeah. at the base of this giant brazier is an enormous executioner's block, pitted from use in black with ancient gore. A so handout A um that had the animals on the outside of the circle. Mm -hmm. So the wolf um, makes the tip of a pyramid between chaos and earth, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, fire. Chaos and fire. All right. So <coughs> what element is across from us? Uh, the northeast corner, which would be behind you right now, mm -hmm. uh, is the element of water, water warm. in the house of the worm. Okay, so water more, so that's down there. Okay. All right. Sorry, I'm just trying to see how this relates to that diagram that we have. Yeah, well, the diagram is a fire wolf. Water. Wolf. Well, fire is between water uh, worm, the wolf and wolf. the the wolf and the goat. Air goat. Air and goat. So go. Right, but the the thing is that it's got void in there. We don't have a void door. Or do we? Void in line. Like, is there a place on the wall that looks like that it's not symmetrical? Like, there should be a door. So There's you the have fifth door that we came in. Your right? elven. There is the f door that you can entered from the the cells of the the right. theophages. Now you do have an ability for detect secret doors. Mm -hmm. uh, how does that work? It's just a plus. It's just, just a, a bonus. Yeah. yeah. A, so go ahead and give me that intelligence test plus that. Okay. Uh, intelligence all plus all of us. Okay. Any elf. A lot of elves. Okay. So this is a plus four. So a fourteen. Okay. 16. No, okay. sorry, I got a 10. No, 12. Right, so, I got this 16. No, so, got a 12. Oh, man. Yeah, Mornath, <clears throat> you search these walls and you feel confident that there's no hidden walls in this room. Okay. But other than that, are the entrance and exits symmetrical? Yeah. Okay. So, so what appears where, what, what appears where the void is? So, like, if fire is to the north, uh, whatever the void is should be to the west. What is to the west? The southwest is air. Is air. I'm okay. sorry, southeast is air. Southwest is earth. Which we don't have air in this first one, right? Yeah, we don't. Now, yeah, I'll I tell don't... you, inspecting all of those, the mention yeah. of air is pretty absent. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's never mentioned in any single one of these. Right. right. And it only shows up, up trapped in the middle on the second one. Yeah. Maybe air is the void, too. Like, maybe, because it, it, it's it's in the, the, the symbol with the air is in the room with all the defaming of all the gods, too. Mm -hmm. Right. But well, that wasn't was that the, the Earth door? That was the air 
goat door with the clay jar that has the hieroglyph on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we went we went first to the earth lion. That's where we pried the rubies out of mm-hmm. the, the okay. statue. Mm-hmm. Then we went to the air in the house of the goat, and that's mm-hmm. that had the big clay jar with the hieroglyph on it. And mm-hmm. now we're down by the fire in the house of the wolf. All right. Yeah. So what do you want to do? You're looking in the fire room, giant brazier. I mean, huge with this executioner's block in front of it. Well, an Alembic generally needs a flame to get it going. So what's right above that huge brazier? Nothing of note. Just ceiling. Yeah. Okay. The two items of note in this room, the only items of note in this room, is the giant brazier and then the executioner's block. We could fly up and look in the brazier. Uh, the If you look at handout A and handout B at the same time, the orientation of the four elemental glyphs is it's the same order. It's just in B, it's got K, the void on the bottom. They're just in, rotated 90 degrees. Right. Hmm. And and the air is in the middle then. If you match them two together. I feel like we're missing oh, no. something. Hey, uh, also on sense. handout B. Um, yeah, let me get to it here. Sorry. B. Uh, okay. Never mind. I just. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just a 90 degree shift. Yeah. And with air. So then, air, if we layered them on top of each other, mm-hmm. then air is right in the middle where there's like a little black dot or something on the handout A. What is in the middle of uh, the room all around? What's dead center in the chamber? In the central chamber? Yeah. It's got the giant brass globe. So is the... It would be a globe of air. Mm. Or... There's only three other smaller globes on the outside. So either Mm -hmm. a globe is missing, which means somebody destroyed the machine already. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, or, except one of those globes should be void. We're missing, but it could be then that we're missing the void globe. Uh, if we're assuming the center globe is air, then okay. Either that or the now center. I have to match up uh, glyphs here. North, west is the wolf. Uh huh. South. West is the northeast is the worm. The lion is southeast. Southeast. West. Southwest is the lion. That's not right. They're backwards. Because the goat is southeast. It's 90 degrees. Is it 90 degrees? Northwest is the wolf. Nope. I think it's backwards. All right. Sorry. <laughs> if you, because if you look at the where the on handout A, where the where the glyphs of the animals are, um, I was trying to line it up with where they are physically. Mm over the doors that we're looking at. So mm-hmm. southeast, but we'll st- if we start southeast, the goat. Okay, the goat is upper right. So if we spun that to southeast, but that puts the lion at southwest. Yeah, right? 
Lion Southwest, and then that puts the wolf at northeast. The wolf in the the wolf in the worm would be backwards then for some reason. Not seeing how that fit. Yeah, that. Hmm. So like the 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 goat and the lion are in the right order on handout A. The goat would be southeast, and then next would be lion in one direction, and then northeast would be the worm. But the other two, all right, that doesn't make any. That's they're like flipped backwards or upside down or something. Mirror, okay. maybe. I mean, the whole thing is kind of a weird mirror image trick, anyway. Yeah, it's true. <clears throat> well, maybe the paper tells us the order in which we need to do all these things in order to get to what the thing is that we need to break apart. Hey, wait, hold on. To read the message, you had to fold it in half. Mm -hmm. um, so if we do that, that would put. It makes three points instead of four points. Um, I think, I mean, on his translated one, it's got that little three-pointed. Yeah. Uh, on A, it's um, fire in between that wolf and goat. You know, what if what if we're missing something that's in the room with the, the double doors? What if, what if, what if we're, we don't got all the pieces yet? Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, that's the one room we haven't seen what's in. Now, can we see what's in it without having to go through all the debris? Um, it, we went into, I thought we only went into three. Mm. So you haven't uh, visited the water, the water room, worm, right? right. And right. the Northeast. only other way through you've seen so far is those double doors where you detected mm. the hint of magic. Right. Back in Maybe there. we do a quick tra tra traipse to the other room to be completest. Mm -hmm. yep. And if we ain't seen nothing in there, this ain't making sense. Maybe maybe there's something right. we need that's in them them double doors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Agreed. All right. <laughs> Chuck, watching watch all the wheels spin. <laughs> Just smoke coming out the top now. I was yeah. actually spinning it, spinning them in my mind, as a matter of fact. I was just spinning them on the screen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's why I was just like, oh, those two are, are backwards. Okay, so right. you, you want to check northeast. out the northeast room? Sure. Yeah, cross it off the list. Okay, that is... So you peek in this room. This chamber once housed a great fountain. Easily 30 feet tall. Now the waters are frozen, cascading down over a statue of a titan-like sage seated atop a throne of power. There's just a small, you know, octagon-shaped room with this giant fountain that's frozen over where the water flowed over this stage in this throne. The sage in this throne. Mm. Uh the throne and the sage like symbols holding anything mm -hmm. um something not attached trying to say i need to get a grip his yes. no so what you can see is the it's Me um too, buddy i'm i'm real bad with this word but anti diluvian so of a mm -hmm. long lost <laughs> age right. yeah it's got a crystal ball in one hand and a staff in the other and his brow is crowned with a snake-like worm devouring its own tail, like Ouroboros. Yep. Ah. Oh, my. So there's the water and there's the worm, which is what this door was, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The crystal ball is actually crystal? Um, It could be. It's, you know, under a good foot or two of this frozen water from this fountain. Does it look like it has a symbol on it? No. Because we are missing a sphere with a symbol on it. Mm -hmm. And it looks like... Actually, I can tell you that. It looks like it's stone. Like it's carved yeah. out of the same stone that the statue is carved out of. And the staff, same thing. Looks like yeah. stone. Yeah. Yeah. 
So the Titan is on a throne in the middle of the fountain? Yeah. Mm. Like the water came up and over back it. down? Yeah. Okay. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Search around for secret doors. Sure, give me the test. Intelligence plus four eight. That's only a twelve. Sorry, I rolled because I didn't know if we're doing the three elves thing again. Mm -hmm. Usually, that's I fine. don't adjust. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh, with that, elves. that twenty-two with mm -hmm. that uh, from Rotten mm -hmm. Gut, you are all mm -hmm. confident. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely no secret doors in this room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it, I'm gonna cast detect magic. I want to know if there's anything magical in this room, uh, sure. traps or otherwise. Hold on, let me pull it up. Uh, detect magic. Roll up there. I'll tell you. Just you don't need to look up the details. No. Okay. So those double doors with the magic thing on the other side seems to be the only thing, unless we want to just pile up a whole bunch of bronze and dig out the <laughs> gems from those statues and leave. I mean, it's possible that that stone that's under that waterfall is still important too. The stone orb? Yeah, I mean, because you have to assume at some point this place wasn't all frozen <clears throat> over. Yeah, but the other ones are brass. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Fair. I guess let's go back to the southeast and check out those double doors. Okay, so you do that the same plan, thing. right? You float across <clears throat> past this weird jar with the air symbol, up the stairs into these double doors with the giant, you know, brass brazers setting in front of it. I wonder if we have a way of moving them without touching them. They're large. They're not booby traps, so... Yeah. No, we've already checked that they're not Yeah, it yeah, looks like someone just dragged these and pushed these in front of the door. Which means don't open dead inside oh dead open inside <laughs> yeah then <laughs> this is the place where we detected something small magical on the other side on right? the other side of the doors mm -hmm. yeah it might be small but it could just be a trigger that wakes I something wanna... else up mm -hmm. bigger mm -hmm. that's a good point chuck i want to hey. walk back down the stairs to that room uh-huh the anti-religion room uh -huh. i want to cast i want to use detect magic down there sure uh, 12, which is like a bear just made magical enhancement of any object or creature within range 30 feet. Is, it, uh, is there anything magical down there? Yeah, it's a big ping coming mm. from that jug. Uh, the jar of anti religion. So it's a it's like a narrow jar that's the it's full huge, height of the room, right? No, the room's only like five feet tall. Oh, okay. And so there's this stone block, and sitting on top of the block is this large clay jar, mm. and the ceiling is touching the lid of this clay jar. Mm. I kind of want to touch the jar, but not with my hand. Conveniently, I have a ten foot rod. Well, I didn't. I just like stopped at the stairs to cast this detect magic. Mm. Because we didn't, we think something about the floor still, or do we, or do I we not? I thought we had figured out that the floor wasn't something, but I don't remember. Something could trigger that uh, pedestal that's underneath the thing, mm -hmm. and it lowers, and whatever's in there comes yeah. out. Yeah, presumably a lot of air. <laughs> it just squashes everything. It's just void. It sucks us all in. It's a canned fart. It's just all <laughs> a bad joke. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> Ancient canned fart. <laughs> but the most magical of canned farts. Ooh, it's a very magical canned fart. All I have to say in that situation is he who smelt it dealt it. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my sense of smell a long thing? time ago. It's really gone low, bro. <laughs> Do we what want to see what's in the giant the jar of death? Is it a fart? Is it not? Is it death? Do we want to find out? No. Very well. Okay. 
So is it like stored magic from all the 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 uh, defacing of holy symbols? There's only one way to find out. Yeah, I know. Like I'm not right, hey, going let, in there. Let, let's back up for a second. So the order of monks that uh, set this whole thing up. Do Theophages. we the Theophages? Do we believe that? Why didn't they do it? Mm. Like it's, if it was if it's all set up and it's ready to go, mm-hmm. why didn't they do it? Well, that was part of the story that I got was that uh, they wanted to give chaos physical form via elemental energy so they could chase off the gods, but then they, for some unknown reason, it was they began scattering their knowledge to uh, around the world. Okay, so that either means that they couldn't do it and someone else had to, and that's why the knowledge wasn't just destroyed, because if they didn't want to do it, they would have just destroyed the knowledge. But instead of destroying mm. it, they made sure that it was disseminated. I wonder if they got afraid of something. Okay, now let's look at the form. Like, how did we get this in the first place, Chuck? Like, our, our page. Uh, you found it in, like, you know, you looted some dungeon or some shit, and it was one of the pieces of loot that you got from the dungeon. Okay. And it's written in the form of essentially a treasure map, right? Because, I mean, we, we got the words treasure, we have power, et cetera, et cetera. So it's luring people here. I mean, that's the only explanation for it is it's a lure. Hmm. So are we saying this whole thing was a trap to get us to come here to let something out? Yeah, and, and it's, it's something either they can't let out or couldn't let out themselves. Or they smartly didn't want to. Or they didn't want to, right. Well, the people here, I'm willing to bet, the people here are actually trying to keep whatever's in here protected. I mean... Maybe the defacements uh, came after the people who were originally here were here. Just no, the- because they, they talks about chasing the gods away, and so they would have no... Actually, that's a good point. Respect. Looking, looking at that room with all the religious icons on the floor, the way it was defaced and the way the icons were graven... Was it by the same hand or did one or did the symbols come first and were later defaced? Because okay, what I'm thinking is I see what you're saying. if all yeah, so if all these symbols were here in the first place undefaced, then this place is something special. And it was taken over by the Theophages, possibly. Mm, that's a good point. So the the holy symbols are from they're symbols for pretty much like every religion out there. Chaotic. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. But the defacing of those symbols, does it look like it was done in what at one time? Like someone made the symbols and then defaced it at the same time? Yes. Okay. So. So do we want to spring it? Or do we want to go through those... Uh... Brass doors? No, I, I kind of, you know, the door and the jar, I'd kind of <laughs> like to make that door a jar, but not the jar broken. I'm try- What I'm trying to say here is I don't trust that jar, maybe even less than them doors. Well, what you're trying to say the- is a jar is best when it's opened. So we want to make the doors a jar, and doors yeah. are better when they're closed, so we want to keep the jar a door. Those of oh. us that can cast spells, can any of us view that room without actually opening the doors? Ooh, I have nothing no. that would do that. I almost took the one that lets me see into the future, but I did I not at the, the last moment. magic was the, is the only thing I've got. Uh, can you... Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. You said that it was like a thing that, like, stairs extending up and past the doors? No, three steps leading up to the doors. Okay. So the doors are on like a slight, like raised, like dais or dais or something. Yeah. Um, Ratka, can you, if we're going to open these doors, yeah. can you position your force wall over the entrance from where that jar is? 
because then yeah. that would that would seal the room from anything attacking us from behind. Yeah, and I mean, I'll have it sitting behind us just in case, like the moment that happens, something happens, and it'll just follow us in, and I'll stop it at the doorway. Okay. I'm right. sealing you in, yeah. That way nothing mm. can follow up behind you. Yeah. I guess we open the doors. Come and open our door. Come and open our doors. <laughs> There's a dragon waiting for you. There's a dragon <laughs> waiting for you. He's got breath and scales and mirth and he's eating you. Do, 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 do. That's wonderful. All right. So you head to the doors. Someone going to move those iron, you know, fire pits. Oh, yeah. Me, the super elf. No. <laughs> I have a strength of 11. Probably going to take several of us to do it. So I'll help. I'll yeah. help. I can. Is the strength okay. check you say? I'm just going to say can... if you all work together. I won't make you roll it. All right. Okay. Otherwise, I'll summon a demon and it'll do it. Oh, no. <laughs> Please don't. Please don't. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. So you drag the iron braziers out of the way. Do you open the doors? Sure. Yes. You got nowhere else to go. Open the doors. And the dead air washes over you from the other side of the room. As that happens, a trio of robed bodies, desiccated by time, and the thin, cold air tumble out and fall clattering to your feet. Mm. A metal mm. disc skitters loose from the corpses, rolling across the floors. Hmm. We're all just standing there. It's like row, 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 row. <laughs> for like five minutes. We're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you do? And you can see beyond this is a hallway that stretches down for a little ways and ends in a what looks like a stone slab that's got a slight curve to it from left to right. And there's mm. deep gouges in that stone at the end of the hallway. And okay. then there's the three robed bodies. They are wearing the same robes as like the other Theophages you saw. And this metal disc lying on the ground. I want to check well, out that mm. disc. I was yeah. just saying, I just oh. pick it up. Yeah. Because <laughs> that was probably, if it was right against the doors, it was exactly where I would have detected the magic thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would, that would track. Be the disc. So that's probably the magic I saw. Hmm. All right. This so here's is the, the motif disc. again. Yep. Oh. Now okay. the exterior oh, no. is mm -hmm. gold or silver. The interior is gold. There's the symbols etched on the outside: the goats, mm -hmm. the worm, mm -hmm. the dragon, and the goat, or the wolf, lion, whatever the four symbols are. And inside, there's the symbols for water, earth, fire, and void. It looks yeah. like the inner disc rotates inside of, of the outer disc. Don't do it. Yeah, don't do it yet. If you move them 45 degrees, they line up with handout A. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, while they're checking out the disc, I'll check out the bodies. What kind of an expression do these faces have? They're mummified, right? So any expression they had on their yeah. faces is long that since like this very toothy off. at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, looking through the robes, you do find that each of them possesses a large stone key. Oh man! Mm -hmm. keys. Might as well take the keys. But... Oh yeah, take them stone keys. Yeah. Mm. Great. We and we found the key to the machine that we didn't want to find. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. So, so now's the question: If this is the key and it's necessary to complete the thing, we could leave, mm -hmm. right? And just take it yeah. with us. It could just be a key to a door, too, though, man. Like we don't. Yeah. Yeah, we still don't then, really know where the alembic is. Not to mention, like, how do we even test if that's the key? What if we put the key in to test if it's the key and we start the thing up? <laughs> 
Mm. Right. So we just take it with us. We'll bury it, throw it in the bottom of the ocean. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> Again, Sid. It's air. at about this time. Somewhere in the monastery. In the direction from where you came. You feel the earth start shuddering. Oh, crap. Hear a mm -hmm. deep, hollow mm -hmm. roar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The walls <clears throat> shake, dust falls. Those braziers that you move tumble down the stairs, making a huge racket. Yes, for body. I'm just pointing it was somebody else's fault. <laughs> hey, uh, just so we're clear again. Wall immune to dragon. Just putting Thank it out you. there, everybody. Right. So we didn't look in this. We didn't walk into this room yet, though, right? This hallway we, beyond it. No. The hallway. Yeah. Um. All right. I guess. Uh. Like do it I'd gently. Do it. <laughs> like wrap the this wrap disc in and put it into my backpack. Like don't turn without. Clamp it all together bundle it up how All heavy right. are these big brass braziers 100 pounds or so each oh okay my. i'm gonna say to everybody grab one of those braziers and let's drag it with us up these stairs now okay <laughs> four bodies got it <laughs> sure sure you grab the braziers and you haul them up you can hear the rumbling growing louder close the doors Wait, if it's getting louder, we don't want to go this way. It's getting louder from the direction from that you came. From where we came in. Oh, okay. No. There's something moving towards you. Something large. Yeah. Close the, the doors, prop the doors. Something large and strong enough to, say, trap three people behind these doors with a couple of really heavy braziers. Uh -huh. Brazier yourselves. Uh -huh. yeah. So I'm saying we take the yeah, brazier. No, yeah, the inside with this. Forced to shut. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. we shut the doors behind us. And that's yeah. how we become the next pile of corpses. No, I'm for it, man. I'm for it. I'm going to take that force field out of me. Let's do this. Let's grab these things. So, yeah, yeah, you barricade the doors with your wall of force and the braziers. You're now in this narrow, short hallway. And one in the door, the walls on either side are plain. At the far end of the hallway is, like I said, a, a stone slam. wall. It is curved slightly from left to right and there's these mm. giant gouge marks going from left to right mm. go inspect it sure like secret door wise something like that yeah be you say careful. gouge marks could they be made by claws no left like? to right no. they disappear between oh, like a some seam. Like a door okay. or something yeah, yeah so, so you I'm get gonna the check feeling the this is I want to check the floor for traps Go before for those gouges. A good five feet now, or so. The this is the wall, this curved wall. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at this curved wall, and it curves kind of out towards you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And these gouges go left to right from where it looks like they go. <sighs> like it spins. Once. The room rotates. Yeah. Oh, the room. I wonder if the room rotates with the mm. discs. I would have rolled a 15 total with my plus four. You know that in front of you is some kind of sealed door. Mm -hmm. And somehow it rotates to move out of your way. Oh, mm. it's a, yeah, okay. The whole thing, probably. Hmm. Do we want to try rotating the discs? Yeah. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> well, I mean, we're in such danger of setting discs. everything off if we... Uh, I know. You hear a loud thud strike against your wall of force. I think we're oh. going to have to. So the wall of force I mean, takes 300 oh. HP worth of damage, by the way. Oh, that's good to know. Oh, boy. So we, we have a timed thing here, y'all. Yeah. I might need to take that wall in case we need it for something later. Well, yeah, I also have the spell, too. Um, so <laughs> Yeah, it's fair. It's, it's about... You know, making a decision now. Mm -hmm. What we don't have any clue what that is. So we just push in. I think it's a matter of which room do we want to go into. 
Like if we're okay. going to rotate the thing, which room is it that we want to open? Yeah. Okay. The, so that's a good disc is a good currently idea. oriented how you see it on the screen. Right. So let's turn, if we're going to turn the disc, let's turn it away from the diagram we have in handout A. Mm. So Just let's in case. use, I'm going to okay. show, I'm going to show the one handout again. So we would see. Move. I almost wanted to line up with the handout A, but I'm. But those are the sheaves of chaos. Like maybe somebody was wanting that. Well, that's that's why I'm saying like we don't want yeah. what we don't want yeah. is the chaos symbol between the wolf and the uh, worm. Right. So I what agree. if we move the chaos symbol between the goat and the the opposite direction, basically. So, I'm in agreement. I'm not the uh, instead of counterclockwise. If I'm right. reading this right, so yeah. yeah, we would move it. Clockwise. What do you want to turn? <clears throat> clockwise, forty-five degrees. So let's look at the the void symbol on the inner one, and I'm going to use the worm symbol. That's the bottom one. Mm -hmm. Where do you want the void to set on? Between here, I think. Yes, Where it's hanged on the map. Exactly there, between the wolf and okay. the goat. Okay. First. Yeah, right there to see if something happens. Right there? Yep. Yeah. That looks right. Oh, yeah. You put the it answer. there and it finishes the ah. movement. Like you that. see well, I mean, this that's... giant stone wall in front of you start rotating left to right but an entrance never comes up. I guess we could do it again. Yeah. And clearly it's how the thing moves. I think it's clearly what we have on the map is the way it's going to have to line up. So, unfortunately. But I, so, right. so one, what I'm worried about is, is the refrain, I offer my soul to ensoul chaos. I think if any living thing goes into that room, it's going to set things off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. we could, Tad, Tad, buddy, how you feel about maybe being the first one in that room? Test that theory, bud. Is Tad, well, we could always summon a demon. That's a living soul, right? Well, yeah, and I, actually, my background is falconer, and I've had a falcon this whole time. So, I mean, worst case, I could just say, hey, buddy, go free. Well, I have <laughs> some an animal. <laughs> oh, nice. See, look, we have options, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's get to it. We got a dragon about to kill us. All right. Void to <laughs> king to be yeah. bishop four. So, where uh, are you? Void to lion. Uh, lion is the circle. Boop. boop. Yes. There it rotates, but an entrance never appears. Uh, void right. to worm. Handout B was the one where things were not lining up with handout A. What if we put it in that configuration? Oh, uh, right. Oh, handout B is just... Um, handout B had just elemental symbols with air in the middle. All right, hold on. Which one was it that didn't match? Uh, it was one that had a half moon, wasn't it? Yeah. C, maybe? Yeah. B uh, no, that was when he folded it when it was folded. Oh, that's why. so. It's it's the only change is that like Chuck folded the paper. I see. So void that's... void to the next one, I guess. Give me a second. To the worm. Void to the worm. As it rotates guy. around, that opens the dragon. <laughs> a hallway Arr! opens up, looking into a grand chamber. Give me a second here. The void heart worm. of the mountain, the void worm. The heart of the mountain has been carved out to create a vast circular chamber, stretching above and below. An arching stone staircase descends to a platform that branches off in three different directions. A thin stream of sparkling green liquid pours from high above. 
the brilliant green liquid collects into a maelstrom thousands of feet below. The frothing storm at the base of this cavern is fed by a trio of elemental channels, thundering avalanche of flame, earth, and water into the storm below. So that's the stone stream and flame give it form, right? Yeah. A house of prison cast on the gods. I don't want to wake up a chaos dragon. So, uh, no, just no, thank you. Chuck, does it look like I'd have the ability to get my force wall back with us, or is it just going to have to sit there? Like It's I, on how, the how other I... side of the door. Are you going to open that door and let your force wall through? Knowing that there's something no. pounding on no. that door? No. No. I'm just going to keep concentrating on it for as long as it's 300 hit points last, I think. So, with that... That's where we're going to call it for tonight. Uh, <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, you all have finally entered the dungeon. Yeah. <laughs> right. Do the, do, would the, oh. Sounds about right. Before that, it was just the monastery. <laughs> That's, mm, I see. I right. See we are, we are at the now witness the majesty of our work. Right? Stone stream uh -huh. flame given form. That's where we are. Oh boy. So now we can we enter the house a prison. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good times. Good times. So oh, it was the unwelcoming no. chamber. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You finally made it to the actual dungeon. Oh my god. Still didn't really want to spin that disc. <laughs> you know, it's not like there's anything terrible happening or I'm tracking things. Mm. Oh, so, all right, as he clicks his pen. <laughs> I saw all those blank dice rolls. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this is yeah where we're going to wrap for tonight. We've been going for about four hours. Mm. Um, I've enjoyed it so far. I'm Agreed. definitely yeah. looking forward to next yeah. session for you all actually exploring the actual dungeon. Uh, let's see. I got some boxes to check. So, Terrible. why don't we go through? And I would like some opinions of uh, what all you think about it so far. All right. Anyone start? Feel free. Right. Um, well, I mean, I, I like the the puzzle so far. Mm -hmm. Um, I kind of question the motivation like why the heck would we even set foot in here right does it make a lot of sense mm. to me <laughs> that's fair i mean because okay if we if we're going by the supposition that there are three of these sheaths and we mm -hmm. have all three mm -hmm. that means there is no other party looking yeah that's we true. just leave. throw them into the fire and yeah. walk yeah. away. Just, we just could straight just walk and away. We could just and, agree. and even if we were just after gold, I mean, that person we walked into would have been enough. Yeah. 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 You know, thousands of gold. Well, mm -hmm. and we have an end to run now. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, yeah, 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 yeah. Plus, we're also uh, trapped now. Like, it's yeah. now mm -hmm. it's all, it seems like we got railroaded yeah. after yeah. a certain point. Even right. If I mean, we hadn't gone through those mm -hmm. doors, mm -hmm. I think. Maybe something we would have been all right. starts chasing us. Well, around. I think the thing is, well, if the dungeon doesn't start till now, then if we hadn't gone through those doors, we're not playing the adventure either. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, but that's well, my point, though, is that mm, there's no good motivation for us to have gone in here at all. I we collected all three. Yeah. Sheets. So, and it's, this it's, is like I don't want to spin the disc right now. This is also a dungeon that's designed to be dropped into an existing campaign world. Mm. So maybe if we weren't running this like a one or two shot, I could have done more prep mm. to give you all a motivating reason to travel into this. Now I've provided a MacGuffin you, or inciting events, right, something I've to, provided mm -hmm. you so far information that's available in the adventure. Mm -hmm. I could have, as a, a judge, I could have provided more background information that, you know, Mm -hmm. This thing has to be destroyed or or actually less information would have given us more reason to go. Like if we didn't know that all the gods would be destroyed and possibly mm -hmm. the entire world, so we yeah. would have gone. 
So in <laughs> here's the, the motivations of that one guy. Kind that of. was the thing. That guy wasn't willing to give information. Uh, it was Christopher's tearing <laughs> yeah. the information from his mind that gave you all of that additional information. Mind. The information, right. if you, if you yeah, if you put an NPC in front of players that have that information, you've got to assume they're going to get it from the NPC. That's true. Yeah. That's absolutely right. fair. Right. I mean, at level five, a spell like yeah. read thoughts isn't. Mm -hmm. I could have charmed him if he was awake and just had him spill mm -hmm. his guts. Yeah. So that's fair. That's absolutely fair. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we had multiple him. ways to get the all of the information from him. Yeah, Maybe I mean, make I, the wizard yeah. a lackey of an even bigger, better wizard. Mm -hmm. Could be. And it, his motivation was specifically he wanted to use this to release the chaos, get rid of all the gods and powerful entities on the world. That way he can be free. Specifically yeah. to free himself. So it's his, yeah. he's all selfish motivation. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I see that. Like, what motivation would you have to go in there like well i don't want to kill the god so i don't need to go in so i could just take the information mm -hmm. burn it and break well, the until key. we got all three three sheaves there would still be a reason to go because we would assume there was still another party looking right. to get in there but once we got all three that's done yeah yes yeah. yeah. you head out i think maybe just a carrot uh for for like to like the you know it, finding out that there's hidden unknown power for anyone mm -hmm. who goes in or you know what i mean just any sort of carrot even if it's just like you know there's a good magic sword in there your wizard mm -hmm. book or you know it's just that's, something that's what oh, that's the only thing keeping oak and fen in there I mean, is, untold riches is sort of mm, well, supposed to be that carrot but as oh, part I, of his I backstory, as part of his backstory, he mm -hmm. sat in a library for several decades just simply doing research uh, to because he doesn't have a patron yet for magic. So he's always mm -hmm. he's on the on the route of getting more, always getting more power, so that he can go face off with a patron. So he, the character's whole motivation is there might be something I can learn from this whole thing. And you maybe could, not kill all the gods. Or you mm -hmm. could be the one to be, you know, take this new void as your patron and you can end the world. <laughs> yeah. And uh... yeah. then I, I rule all. Hmm? Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, it's like all my. Yeah, yeah, but motivation is the is is the first thing that mm -hmm. you know I look at because otherwise it's just a railroad. If you don't have a yeah. good motivation to do it. There's yeah. no reason to do it. That's, that's what I said. Some invite inciting event or MacGuffin, right? Yeah. Like they're yeah. Yeah. And so the the railroad part, the threat at the door forcing you all into this hallway, that was that is part of the adventure. Hmm. Yeah. There yeah, is a threat the there. Of... I played the threat down a little bit more. Um, it was actually supposed to be a very dangerous combat right there. Hmm. But I kind of I tuned it down a little bit to make it a little less, a little more vague. And you know the the unknown danger at the edge, forcing you mm. further in. Right. But yeah. Yep. Otherwise, I mean, it it's it's been a fun a fun yeah, go so fun. far. Agreed. I do enjoy the puzzles and the theme so far. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm well, just super bad at puzzles, y'all. That's, that's I, just I, oh yeah. Uh, I also perfect. question the fact from the very beginning that there is an inn with no surrounding town at the base of a mountain right that, you know. right well in the so the, to me that sounds like a whole bunch of people tried this before and it's like mm -hmm. hey let's just make an inn let's catch all the rubes going so right. the the location or, of the inn is where you want it to be the inn mm -hmm. is just the ambush for that wizard so you can get the second sheep okay if, so there is a town there then there's there's nothing there. well what what he's saying is that it could we yeah. in your story in there could be whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Could this been could have been and then you drop weeks this away in. worth of travel. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Okay. So it I just at the base yeah. of this we just yeah, I we was just, that was just a little yeah. This was just yeah. me doing a little bit of, you know, I just was streamlining things to oh, right. like the bar yeah. from uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark in yeah. the Himalayas. Right. Just like you have just tiny little village. Yeah. We're closed. It's like, yeah. what's the name of the tavern? The Dead's Rube. <laughs> so, yeah. You could have gotten the first sheave, and then the Rube's dude shows call. up for the second sheave, and it could have been, you know, anywhere in your campaign world. Uh, and I just put this bar at the base of it, just kind of 
you know, just Speed put the I mean, sure. the yeah. party could have been carrying around the sheaf and not had it, you know, uh, like not understood what it meant yet. Yeah. Just been like, mm-hmm. It's part of our loot pack right now until we have time to figure right. it out and, and then get a yeah. tag to be like, the adventure starts off presuming that you don't know what it is, and mm-hmm. then it's up to all of you to try and figure out what it says. Well, then the instigation mm. of that then would be the wizard attacking us. I mean, yeah. that would be the whole setup because then we, you yeah. know, we assuming right, we lived through it, we would question the wizard to find out why. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, a really good way to do that would be like, you know, you go to, to a town with this tavern in it, and then maybe there's another wizard who's like, yeah, let me make a copy of this. I'll have my scribe make a copy of this for you, and then I'll ask around with some of my wizard buddies who might know something. And then all of a sudden, this wizard shows yeah. up like, aha, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, caught you. Yeah. You know? yeah. So yeah, that part, there, there's different ways to put that in there. Like I said, I went the cheap and dirty, just put it right there to... Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, well, we I like definitely want to see dirty. more. I, I do Agreed. want to see more. So. Yeah, no, we got. I just, it better not be all combat from here on out. It is. It's it's, it's 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 a blend, <laughs> and you know, I'll tell you that there's there's um, it's a good blend of there's some puzzle solving, there's some dungeon exploration, there is some combat, I and there's like the social stuff too. Yeah. yeah, so it's not just. Mm-hmm. This is oh God, social pure stuff puzzle. Their best personality yeah, being 11. They're just not like, this is pure puzzle from now on. It is a strong blend of everything centered mm-hmm. around a giant puzzle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I do like, I do like the concept, like the overall theme of the thing, right? Like mm-hmm. the killing the gods uh, is an interesting premise. Like eliminating all the gods off a of plane. Yeah. Seems like a fun thing to explore. Like, cause you could have a party like us that is inclined to be, the best worst kind of murder hobo sometimes and be like yeah maybe maybe we just throw the switch on this thing maybe we're we the new it. pantheon of gods now yeah yeah it could Everyone be anything from <laughs> stopping it or stopping a third party from reaching it before you do or um or just I think... uh, like i want to rule everything let me see if it works mm-hmm. yeah it's absolutely fair all right which i think which i think yeah. should be a key thing for every Mm. major dungeon is that people of different motivations can go to the same place thinking "Ooh, this is what i want yeah yeah you having a good reason for anyone want to be in there yeah so uh i think you know this is where we'll wrap it up let's go mm. through and do our plugs uh jeremy christopher and bert oh and Frendon. uh we'll just start with jeremy we'll go in the order of the overlay jeremy talk about Clubcast. the cast P-L-E-W-D, Plutecast. We're going to be recording something for martial law coming up this week. It'll be fun. There you go. Like your, oh, your like alien a fun game. character, yeah. There you go. Christopher. Uh, Twitch.tv slash all the RPGs or 2OGGames.com where I write adventures. On the Twitch, we play the adventures. There you go. Uh, Bert. Uh, of Steam, Steal, and Murder, the podcast at Blue Magic, B-L-U-M-A-G-I-K uh, dot com. Also on the Notorious DMG Twitch channel, First Edition D&D on Tuesday, mm-hmm. and Shadowrun on Sunday. Not tomorrow Sunday, but next Sunday. The next. Yeah. Yeah. And wear these ears for Shadowrun from now on. That's, that's <laughs> great, man. Nice. Uh, I'm going to get a little LED light up thing that sits that's on what my you head Just here. super glue oh, an LED cool. right Just there. like them. Look just yes. like them. Yeah. Uh, Friend <laughs> Oh, that's me. Hi, yeah. I'm Frendon. Uh, you can find me at Twitch slash my username, which is Frendon. And uh, I make tabletop art for a living. So if you want to watch somebody make some tabletop art, uh, OSR style stuff, black and white ink illustration, the kind of stuff that's inside of the DCC books, that's my jam too. Just uh, come and say hi. And crazy Pokemon. And crazy, crazy Pokemon, Pokemon sometimes. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Always a fun time. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. so Jake, Tyler, and I defenders of cobalt that's us twitch.tv slash defenders of cobalt uh we'll be back for our next defender show on wednesday where we're continuing rhyme of the frost maiden the fifth ed- uh, fifth edition adventure but we're running it in dark trails the dcc weird west game it's a lot of fun uh this coming friday joe is going to be continuing our evil fifth ed adventure uh Ooh. the hollow throne uh 
Monday, I'll be over on the Lollygaggers playing some Alien with the Grim and Perilous crew. Uh, Tuesday, like Bert said, uh, some of us will be over on twitch.tv slash NotoriousDMGTV for First Ed D&D. Uh, and next Saturday, we'll be... Next Saturday, we'll be on... Uh, Free League Publishing, twitch.tv slash Free League Publishing for some more Forbidden Lands. We also got a bunch of zines out right now. We're getting ready to drop another one. So you can look for Defenders of Cobalt or Dan Dies in the End on Drive-Thru RPG. They are uh, adult rated, uh, so you'll need to be logged in if you want to see them. Uh, but yeah, that's what we got. Thanks for everyone for watching. Thanks for playing. And uh, until we see you next time. Oh, I can't use my normal catchphrase. It's just stay illuminated, up. stay stimulated, and support your local businesses. That's it, right there. We'll catch you all later. Bye. Don't get COVID. It sucks. Don't get COVID. That's the don't get one. COVID. Let's see. Mm. Just... All right. Bye. Welcome to the Defenders of Cobalt Twitch stream. Please enjoy this DMCA free music while we wait for the show to start. It's a Twitch stream. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 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 It's a Twitch stream. Playing some games. It's a Twitch stream. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 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 It's a Twitch stream. Talking about cheese. What's new, little Twitch stream? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's new, little Twitch stream? Whoa, 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 whoa. Twitch stream, Twitch stream, I love you. Yes, I do. Boots and cats and 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 boots and boots and cats and boots and cats. And boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats boots cats Welcome to the Defenders of Cobalt Twitch stream. Please enjoy this DMCA free music while we wait for the show to start. It's a Twitch stream. Whoa, 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 whoa. it's a Twitch stream. Playing some games. It's a Twitch stream. Whoa, 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 it's a Twitch stream. Talking about.